Well, hello! I really hope that we're live and everyone can hear this and give me a shout out about the quality of the audio. But, uh, looks like the stream is up and running. I'm, I'm always a bit, um, a bit, um, hopeful that uh, this is going to be good. But I'm never quite sure until we go fully live and, um, it all seems to be working. So, fingers crossed, everything seems to be working well. I'm trying a lot of new stuff with the setup of this stream. So, if something goes wrong, then, um... I apologize in advance, but who's excited? It's Root, and I've got a picture here of the the Root board that I'm setting up, and um, yeah, we're gonna do a game against the the Automata, so it's gonna be a solo playthrough, just me and four and three robots. Is this coming through okay? God, I hope so. So, oh my god, okay. Where'd my stream go? Oh no, Hexy Beast, you can hear the laptop fan. Gosh darn it, I've been trying so hard to work on this stuff. Um, also, I can't seem to connect to the chat in YouTube's live stream functionality, so um, apologies for that. Um, but uh, can you all see me and hear me okay, currently, right now? Is it working? Um, give me a shout out so I know because my YouTube studio is just useless. Thanks, YouTube. Um, but, uh, yeah, and, uh, Hexy, is the sound of the, is the sound of the, the laptop unbearable or is it manageable? In the meantime, I shall get this board set up. Okay, Michael, thank you for the feedback. Lasse, good to see you, sir. Yogi Baber. Hello. It's not unbearable. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the best feedback I've ever had. It's not unbearable. <laughs> so I've got uh, Root all set up here. I've got um, the new Kickstarter, the Underworld Kickstarter, and we're going to do some cool stuff with... Uh, with yeah, Heggers, I, I, but I really want the audio quality on these streams to be really, really good, because I know how important that is to making sort of a, a good show and just feeling sort of immersive. So I've been working really hard on trying to fix the audio so it's the best it can possibly be. And um, it's difficult with, I mean, oh God, I wish I could show you guys my live stream setup right now. It's absolutely nuts. Um, yeah, yeah, well... You know, it's, uh, I think the, so anyway, well, let's not get into a huge discussion about, about, uh, live stream technology because I will literally talk your ears off all day. I've been attempting to become an expert, but, um, what I've got here is the, uh, is Root with, with two expansions. Um, I say two expansions, sort of bits and pieces really from both of the Root Kickstarters. I was, a I was an early adopter of Root, um, Jebediah Springfield. Happy birthday, sir. Hello. Oh, Lee Mike Hunt. There we go. Happy birthday, Lee, today. In fact, it's my friend's birthday today as well, so I'll be going to that later on. <laughs> is, that, uh, is that okay? Anyway. Um, so what, I'm, what I've got here is sort of bits and pieces from both, uh, both Kickstarters. Hmm. We've got the core set, of course. We've got the we've got the clockwork expansion because I needed that in order to play by myself in isolation, which is what's happening now. And the other thing is that uh, actually, uh, Leader Games are very very nice, and they sent me a review copy of the clockwork expansion because I didn't back it. 
because I'm not much of a solo gamer. So I have become much more of a solo gamer in the current climate. And uh, now I'm learning all about bots and stuff. And I got to say, I may maybe this is my naivety because I don't play a lot of solo games um, until recently. And now I've played quite a lot. But uh, I thought the... I thought that the uh, the bots in this were pretty cool, so uh, I'm quite excited to show them to you. And the snowy version, yeah. Well, heck, yeah. There's four maps now, four the the four maps, four maps now in the game. And the um, <laughs> yeah, get off my lawn. But uh, you know, um, there are four maps. There's the forest map, which is the one you get with the main game. There's the winter map, which is a slightly sort of more difficult version with randomized clearing suits, which will make no sense if you don't know how to play, but will make sense in due course. And then there's also the underground map and the lake map. And I played a bunch of uh, games against the Automata in preparation for this. And I got to say, I really like the premise of both of the new maps. The lake map has this big lake in the middle that's impassable, but you can kind of move around it, but only if the ferry is available. And then the underground map has these tunnels that you can sort of, um, um, <laughs> yeah, right, Lee? You know, um, it's like uh, they say in retail, you know, this job would be great if it wasn't for the customers. <laughs> this game would be great if it wasn't for the other players. Um, so, the, uh, the, and the underground map, which is really cool, it's got these tunnels that you can clear, and it's also got this tower in the central clearing, and if you control that, you get a point at the end of a, your turn. So that's really cool, but... All of these things are things that the AI doesn't take advantage of. And so it felt a bit like I wouldn't really be showcasing them to their full effect. And they'd only be benefiting me if I played with those maps. So I decided to go with the winter map because I get to use the I get to use the fancy resin clearing markers. Let's see if I can show these to you without making everyone seasick. Come on, little camera. But um We'll see how this guy does today. I'm working on all kinds of cool stuff. So here we go. Um, and so you get these resin clearing markers, and this came with the new Kickstarter, and they're for marking the clearings on the maps where the clearings are randomized. So you've got three suits, and these represent the people who live in the forest. So, oh my god, if you guys don't know what Root is, does anyone here not know what Root is? Anyway, um, Root is basically uh, Disney's Robin Hood meets the Iraq war. It's like a conflict with all these really adorable anthropomorphic animals who are just like hanging out in the forest and then having conflicts with one another and trying to rule the forest. And the game itself has a sort of a set of core, sort of basic core rules that create the a sort of a, a, a war game, essentially a very light war game. But the premise of the game is that every single faction in the game and we're playing with four factions today. Every single faction in the game has these different rules. So they all play very differently. And thematically, they all function very differently. So it's really, really interesting. <laughs> Furry Fury, yeah. It's a... Heggers, well then this is for you. Um, yeah, so uh, my apologies for not kicking off the stream with what is Root. Um, but essentially what we're doing is we're, we're the animals of the forest fighting over the forest. And there is a, uh, a Marquis de Cat, which will be an automata in our game here today. But uh, the Marquis de Cat is the current ruler of the forest. And the sort of hated feudal overlord with, uh, and their whole bang is having lots and lots of, um, lots of, lots of warriors. So they have these cute little animal warriors here like this. And they've also got um, all of these buildings, these squares of buildings that they're going to build. So they're basically industrial machine, just chur war machine, just churning out soldiers and just chopping down the forest for the good of the industry. Uh, yeah, Hexy, this is a really cool dice tower, actually. I can't remember the name of the company that made it, but this one's branded with Grimlord Games. But uh, I got this for rolling the dice today. It's... Really good. <laughs> and also, it takes hours to build. Um, and then you've got... Uh, so, you've also... There there are currently now eight races available for the game, which is a lot of races, and they all are distinctly different. So, they play differently, and they, they, they feel distinct. 
especially and in, in, in the sort of the basic mechanics of the way that they operate, but also sort of thematically on the table, you get this real sort of sense. Each one has a different sort of ebb and flow of gaining points and things like that. So the way the game works in, in essentially is that the there's this victory point track here, and first to 30 is the winner. And the minute someone hits 30 points, they win the game. And the way your faction earns points will be determined entirely by your faction's sort of unique configuration. So the Marquis de Cat gets points by building buildings to fuel the industrial machine. There's the uh, Vagabot up here, which is this sort of, essentially a, a rogue soldier who's wandering around the forest just trying to pilfer and profiteer off of the conflict, essentially, and sort of get famous. And they earn points by killing enemy soldiers and crafting items and sort of things that they can use. The Everyone can craft items, but only the Vagabond can actually use them. In the full game, the Vagabond character is very, very different to this bot because they have, they're probably the character with the most... They, they're sort of simulating a almost like a lone adventurer, a lone wolf wandering around the forest with all these different functions. And uh, they, that, that had to be extremely simplified for the bot version because the kind of autonomy or the you just to make those decisions you need to be a person um i think or you you you'd have to have so many ai sort of like um criteria for making decisions that it would just be unparsable so um but i like the way they've implemented the vagabot actually in this game i've played with it a few times and i really like how it's been done so we've included them um so uh that's an interesting question lee um the my favorite faction is actually probably one I'm not playing with today, which is the Lizard Cult, which I did play with in our series on the channel. I did make a few rules mistakes in that series, so I do apologize for that. Now, here on the live stream, I offer my um, humble apologies. Um, but generally speaking, I think we got it more or less right, at least enough to get a sense of how the game plays out. But um, I like them because they're just a manic religious extremist. You know, they're just like, they're... Uh, you know, they, they really are sort of like just crazy religious nutcases and their whole thing is trying to convert as much of the forest to their religion as possible, uh, which I think is, is really interesting. And, and so, you know, every faction has these warrior pieces except for the Vagabot who has just their piece and it's not a warrior, it's called a pawn, and that's distinct. But uh, if we go back over to this camera, we can see the cat warriors there and... Um, we can see here this is the automated this is the alliance so the um the alliance is uh, another faction here and they they represent the citizens of the forests and they're actually a coalition of foxes mice and rabbits and they're almost like guerrilla warriors rising up through the uh through the rank or through the uh the citizenry to overthrow the oppressive cat um aristocracy so <laughs> if it's it's really uh and it's really thematic in that way, the way they operate. They don't get a lot of soldiers, but they create these sort of revolts in the towns that uh, destroy everything except for their hidden bases. And uh, I really like the way they've implemented the, um, the automated alliance in this as well. It feels really thematic for that. Um, we've also got the, um, so the, the, and the Vagabot here. The Vagabond and the automated alliance and the, or the cats, the, Citizenry and the, the Vagabond are, are three of the, the four races from the core set. The one we're missing out here is the Eerie. And the reason I'm not using the Eerie is because I'm playing the Underground Duchy and they're quite similar in terms of their thematic function. So both are powerful factions with lots of warriors that have come to sort of say, you know, to the cats, like, we're going to overthrow your armies and we're going to rule this space, you know. So they're, they've, they, they feel quite similar. So if you play with the cats, the birds, and the moles, so the the eerie, the um, Marquis de Cat, and the Underground Duchy, you get these massive wars with just tons of soldiers because they are the factions that have those resources to produce those armies. But because I'm playing the Underground Duchy, because I wanted to show you guys one of the new races from the, uh, from the new Underworld expansion, and the Corvid Conspiracy is the other new race. They're crows, and they're sort of plotting their political manipulators they've got these plot tokens that they put out on the board and each plot token sort of does different things and they have to 
and basically other players can challenge them and try to guess what the plots are and if they get it right the plot is prevented and if they get it wrong then they have to give cards to the Corvid player and so the Corvid player gets some resources and then the plots can go off and they get points for that. Um, and I really, really liked how the Corvid Conspiracy played. I played with them. But I just, because the bluffing mechanic hasn't been implemented with the AI yet, and the gentleman who designed all these AI factions, a chap called Benjamin. Um, so I, I don't know his second name, I'm afraid, but props to you, Benjamin, because you've done a great job. And Leader Games just took what he did and put it in a box and produced it. So now we all have it with nice printing. But you can also print and play all of these automated factions right off of Board Game Geek as well. So you don't need to buy the Clockwork expansion, or you don't need to own it to do this. But um, Benjamin did say he was working on a protocol for the AI to deal with the Corvid conspiracy and stuff like that. So you can expect to see, I hope, more of the AI interactions with the, the, the other races. But uh, at the moment, it's just the uh, the four in the core set that are ready, I think. Um, Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, Lee, I always say, you know, um, to my friends, like, when we're playing games and stuff like that, don't worry too much about playing with uh, full optimization because, because um, you know, the most interesting parts of games are when people make mistakes. You know, human error is the most interesting part of a game. You know, and uh, I think it was... Um, oh, someone said to me as well... I, maybe I heard it on a podcast. I can't remember. But there was so, so one of these uh, chats where people were talking about games, and they said, you know, when you make a mistake, you're the only one that's upset about that. You know, everyone else thinks it's hilarious. So, you know, try to take uh, take solace in the fact that everyone's <laughs> having a good time. You know, I think that's really nice uh, way to think about it. So, um, yeah, so... Um, the other race that we've got that I haven't talked about yet is the the Otters... And they are like um, the merchant traders. So they, they travel along the river on the board and they, they trade with the clearings and their job is basically just selling goods and making money off of the war that's going on. And they can get involved in fights and things as well, but aggression's not their primary goal. Their primary goal is fighting and profiting from economy, economic, um, economic uh, endeavors. So that they're really interesting as well and it's nice to have all these distinct factions and the way they differentiate as well like they say the cat who's got all these buildings and doing this industrial thing and the eerie who are the birds who were the former rulers of the forest before the cats overthrew them um the eerie have got this whole sort of programming thing where they essentially have these leaders that come in and give you unique powers but you've got to program these cards into a tableau and then take actions based on those cards so you get this escalating power over the course of the game but if you ever fail to take actions for one of the cards in the tableau, essentially the, uh, the political situation in your dynasty, your eerie dynasty, has gone wrong and you go into a sort of a period of turmoil where you lose all your cards and you have to change your leader. So it's really, really interesting. Um, and I really, really like that as well. Um, but uh, yeah, the electric eerie, not in it, because we're playing with the underground duchy. And their whole thing is basically swaying these squire cards. But I'll talk more about, about that in just a minute. What I've got to do now is sort of set the game up. As usual, I'm not quite fully set up because I had to get the live stream equipment set up. And that takes time. I was a bit late starting as well, so I do apologize. But um, what we've got to do first is uh, seed... Oh, where did I go? What we're going to do first is seed the board with these, uh, these tokens. And these are the priority tokens for the AI. So the AI is going to prioritize spaces based on these numbered tokens here and these don't exist in the in a game with all human players and what's cool as well is that you can play so you can play a five player game with the clockwork expansion you the four um the four yeah the four it's funny actually because the eerie dynasty is so aggressive and the airs and cloud spire so aggressive as well i don't know what it is about thematically aggressive birds but that's just a thing now i think um so here we go. Yeah, so if you, but you can, so you could play like, a, you could play a seven player game with five AI and two people if that's what you wanted to do. So that's, uh, that's really interesting um, that you can do that. And it's, I like it because the game really, I think, excels at three plus. I've never played with more than four, so I don't know if it gets, 
really clunky at a higher player count. But the turns are, the turns are pretty crisp. I think that there's a lot of uh, scope for people to get a bit um, to get a bit uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, analysis paralysis, I suppose, or a bit sort of heads down. But I think if you can encourage people to sort of play quickly and um, sort of uh, play thematically, then you could really get through a game quite quickly, and uh, the turns would be pretty clip as well, even at a higher player count. Um, and you get these sort of like little conflicts breaking off around the board. All of these clearings sort of create focal points for the conflicts. So the um, so the, the conflicts really do sort of like pop up in these little areas, and it, it's brilliant. Uh, as you sort of fight back and forth over different areas, and the conflict sort of moves around, it evolves in a really great way, and it evolves very differently based on the configuration of the factions you've got, which I really, really like. So I'm supposed to randomize these clearings, and usually I roll a dice. There's actually a set of tokens you can put out and then flip them over. Um, if you don't have these resin clearing markers, which came with the latest Kickstarter, then you can... Um, you can use these paper tokens that come in the core set, but uh, I'm just going to sort of do this quickly now for the, uh, for the sake of the, the show here, as randomly as possible. And there is a recommended layout as well to sort of create a bit, ex bit extra balance, but in my experience, randomizing these doesn't unbalance the game in any significant way that I've seen. So... Here we go. These so these these are also uh, yeah these are also based on the, the 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 people that live in the forest. So there we go. All the different clearings representing the villages, filled with all the little animals. And this game is so cute. I'm gonna wind up wasting this whole stream showing you guys cards because I just love all the artwork so much. By a chap called Kyle Ferrin. So thank you very much for uh, for all the wonderful artwork, Kyle. Mm. Uh, coffee break while I remember what to do next. Um, everyone gets three cards in a game with all humans. In a game with three robots, I get three cards and they get nothing. All right, so here we go. I'm playing also with this uh, new deck. So um, the core set comes with a a uh, deck of card. The core set comes with a deck of cards like this, but um, these are called the order cards, and they have all kinds of functions that we'll look at as we play the game. In the version of the game here with these AI, the uh, order cards actually function as sort of determining what the AI are going to do every round. So Benjamin has essentially used the deck of cards to create uh, randomized behavior, which is really good. But uh, all of the cards have these functions that they, they, they do in, in a game with all humans as well. So you can, you can do all kinds of stuff with these cards. And each faction as well use, uses the cards differently. So each faction will do something different based on uh, how, they, how their particular functionality works. Um, so, ooh, Hager's Kickstarter, exciting! I haven't had, oh, my last Kickstarter was Munchkin Dungeon, uh, which I backed because I like to cover Simon games on the channel because they're a big company and I think it's important. Um, but I didn't even get to the last one. What was the last one I got from Simon? Um, no, I did. I think we... Yeah, Cthulhu. We did cover Cthulhu. In fact, there was a lot of votes for Cthulhu. Cthulhu might well be the next live stream. I don't know if anyone's excited to see Death May Die, but that could be next. But, um... Hey, Paul! Hey! How you doing? Thanks for, uh, thanks for checking in. So, uh, what we've got here are three... So this is the... This is what I was going to say was this is the path of... This is the Exiles deck. So this is a new deck of cards, replaces the other deck of cards that comes in the core set, and it just gives you a bit more variety. So you just swap in one deck in and out, and essentially some of these pow cards have asymmetrical powers that you can attain on them, and the powers will be different based on which deck of cards you're using. There's also uh, in this deck these dominance cards, which are a really cool feature of the game. Essentially, I said uh, the winner is the first to 30 victory points, but if you're getting into the game and you're like way behind, and you acquire one of these dominance cards, you can actually just go, I don't want to win the game like that anymore. I want to play this other dominance game where essentially I'm going to play a territory control game instead of a points victory points game now. Um, so it's sort of a catch-up mechanic, and it's really, really interesting. But you don't use these in the game with the automata, so we're not going to be using these today, unfortunately. Um, well, it's good to take a quick break 
a quick break from rulebook editing to eat some ice cream, Paul. That's what I always say. And um, also, hopefully, Loki's hanging out as well. Say hi to Loki. That's Paul's cat. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it might be a good policy now, Jonathan, to just not back Kickstarters. <laughs> Save yourself some money. Um, okay, so um, what we're going to do now is set up the, uh, the factions in order. And we're going to start with setting up the Marquis de Cat because all of the factions essentially have a, a strict setup order and it's it's locked in every time. So you always start with the Marquis de Cat and then you do the Eerie and then the Woodland Alliance and then the Vagabond and then the Lizard Cult and then the Otters and then the Underground Duchy and then the Corvid Conspiracy always goes last. So in this case we're going to do Cat, Woodland Alliance, Vagabond and Underground Duchy. The Woodland Alliance is very easy to set up. <laughs> But uh, the cat gets to start by choosing a corner, one of the four clearings in the corner, to place the keep. And the keep is this little uh, little doodad here, and it's a little castle, and it essentially just stops. Uh, it makes it more difficult for people to invade the clearing that it's in. So controlling the clearings is useful for very different reasons. Depending on who you are will depend on why you want to control the clearings. I'm going to move this down a little bit, see if I can't get the cat a bit more on the table camera here. So you guys can see a bit better what's going on. There we go. Okay. So what we've got uh, going on here is the cat picking one of the four corners. And I always just randomize this with a die because if you were a player, you could choose. But uh, it's a robot. So here we go. Whee! And it's a zero. So we're going to go up here. The zero, one, two, three. I did, uh, I did not explain that. Also, this looks like a D12, but it's not. It's actually just got 0, 1, 2, and 3 on it. And I'll explain why when we get to fighting and how fighting resolution works. So uh, the cat starts up there. They get to put out three buildings. And we're going to start with uh, buildings, the sawmill in here. And then we're going to put the other two in here. And the reason I've done this is because the AI likes to prioritize based on the numbers. And it's a little confusing. Their highest priority is number one. So I always think of the clearings kind of like a to-do list, because the game will say, um, pick your highest priority clearing, which sounds like it might be the biggest number, but it's not. The highest priority clearing is the lowest number. So it's kind of like a to-do list where number one is the first thing they should do. That's how I think about it. Um, so in this case, we've got um, the keep going up there in number one space, and I've put the other two buildings, because they can choose between any adjacent clearing to the starting clearing, so any of these three actually, to put these other buildings. But uh, we've got them here because clearing five is the highest priority of these three. And actually what I'll do is I'll bring the camera over here. Unfortunately on the winter board, this is one of the downsides of using the winter board I'm afraid, but um, there are in fact these little spaces in each area for buildings. And some clearings have spaces for just one building and some clearings have spaces for three. And some, some have these ruins in, and we'll look at those later when we get to the Vagabond. But um, some, So some clearings are better than others if you want to get your buildings out. But uh, a little hard to pick up on the winter board, I, I recognize. So apologies for that, but I thought this was the, most, the best board for us to use, all things considered. So... <laughs> uh, dude, d um, Jonathan, don't let me show you my my room that I'm in right now. It's like, it's just a game's kingdom. Um, what I'm gonna do actually is I'll lie these guys down so you can see them better on the top camera. Um, I have a, a, a fireplace, a filled in fireplace in here and it's just, the entire fireplace is the Joan of Arc Kickstarter. Which uh, I haven't even opened all of the boxes of yet. That was a crazy Kickstarter. So all of the, uh, so the Marquis de Cat gets to put one soldier, they start with the most warriors on the board. They're called warriors. And um, they start with one in every clearing, except for the corner directly opposite to the corner they started in. Go figure. Um, so they're actually done now. We'll take their little victory point token here, we'll put it at the beginning of the victory point track, and they're all set up. Now the Woodland Alliance is very, very easy to set up because...
And I'm back. Oh my god, you guys. Okay. So sorry about that. Um, that's just what happens when you run. <sighs> so, uh, anyway. Uh, where did I go out? Um, just talking about the Woodland Alliance here. They start with nothing on the board because they are... Jonathan, do you know sign language? You should teach me. If you know, I'd love to learn sign language. That would be super cool. Um, so they're, the Woodland Alliance exists in every clearing, but as citizens populating the board. So at the moment, they're just going to be off the board, and they're, as the outrage against the oppressors builds, we'll get to put some stuff out. But we'll put our victory point down, tracker down here on the zero space as well. And then we've got uh, the Vagabond. And the Vagabond, who is over here, is going to start in the forest that's connected to the most clearings. That's right, so all of the pieces on the board, which are three types, buildings, which are these square pieces, tokens, which are the round ones, and warriors, which are the wooden pieces here, they all exist in clearings for every race, except for the Vagabond, who's not actually a... The Vagabond is not actually a warrior at all, but a little piece like this. And I've chosen this one because I thought the, the pumpkin mask, this is actually the scoundrel bag of bond. There's a ton of different pieces. So you can sort of customize how you want your, your character to look. But uh, I picked this one because I thought the pumpkin mask kind of made it look a bit like an automaton or a mannequin or something. So they, uh, the, the vagabond can actually move into the forest. And Braille is still pretty cool. Um, Lee, Braille is another thing that would be cool to learn. So the... Um, and the Vagabond actually moves in and out of the forests. So the Vagabond will start in the forest connected to the most clearings, which on the winter map is this massive forest here in the middle. Forests are not broken up by rivers, uh, only pathways between clearings. So the thing is, the um, so yeah, so all the, the clearings have these paths that connect them, and not every clearing is connected to every other clearing. So hopefully that's clear on the board here that you can see. But the Vagabond, the Vagabot, the automated Vagabond, doesn't really do a lot of this slipping in and out of the forest, which is a bit of a shame. It will do it if it gets severely pummeled, but it's unlikely that there'll be a conflict so dangerous that the, the, they'll, they'll do that in this game, but we'll see. And then we put this victory point tracker out here as well. And we flip over a quest card. So they have all of these little quests, which are pretty cool. And uh, they're a lot more complicated to do in the... Uh, a lot more complicated to do in the in the if you're a human person, but if you're a robot, then uh, you just go to the chosen the, the clearing and and fulfill the action. In this case, it's give a speech, which is pretty all. And these these are all really fun and thematic, and they have all of the great Kalfer and artwork. So, it's 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 some of them are like fight a bear and chase off bandits and all kinds of stuff. So, that's the vagabond. They're going to go and give a speech in a fox clearing at some point probably. And uh, you've got uh, all these three different functions as well. Um, there are many more role cards for the Vagabond if you are playing as a human person. But uh, if you're playing as the Automata, you've got uh, a Ranger, you can be a Tinkerer, or in this case I've actually play, uh, put in the Thief, because I think the Thief is really interesting. Um, the Tinkerer is also pretty interesting, but uh, I like the Thief, uh, I think it's more interesting. So we get rid of the other two for now. And then what we're going to do is we are going to put out the Moles. So the moles are going to start in the clearing opposite the Market Cat, and they're going to build a tunnel in there as well. So the moles have these little tunnels. They essentially exist underground, and they just pop up willy-nilly with massive armies of mole people because they've been underground farming all these mole, all these resources and building up a huge army to take over the above ground. But uh, at the moment, so you can see they've got all these warriors available. And what's interesting as well is you can see actually from hopefully on the camera that uh, there are a distinct number of wooden pieces. So the cat, I think, has something like 15 or tw no, 20, 20 warriors available to the cat that they can put out on the board. Whereas the Automated Alliance, the Woodland Alliance, only have 10 because they're a much smaller guerrilla warfare um, force. So the the number of wooden pieces is, is very uh, deliberate and a sort of interesting indicator of the, the, the faction's um, capabilities and functions. So we will be able to, at some point, hopefully bring a full army of mole people to bear. But what we've also got going on here is this burrow, and the burrow is essentially an underground um, army camp where we are going to be hiring our soldiers, 
and then they can pop out of the burrow and appear anywhere on the board. So they're like a surprise attack. Ha! So we're going to use that um, as well. But we don't start with anyone in the burrow. We only start with two soldiers, and we'll have to build that up. So we start with zero victory points as well. And essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to make our sort of incursion into the above ground area uh, successful and profitable. Essentially, we're, we're going to show them who's boss, but would mole people. And, <laughs> and uh, what we need to do is to create influence in the above ground area. And we, we're going to do that by getting soldiers and buildings above ground. And we're going to be swaying these mole nobility to our cause. So we're going to be convincing them that the war is profitable and worthwhile and worth doing. So let's find out. Um, hi, Gavin. Um, no, the moles are not... Well, uh, the Viet Cong... Well, I mean, uh, yeah, sort of maybe in a way, yeah. Um, the Vagabond is very cool. I think... The, va the thing about the Vagabond, if you're playing with real people, it's like, it's a role that's really fun to play and really has the potential to be really like sort of trolly but the vagabond's player has to kind of use their powers to sort of maintain a balance of power because if you sort of kick the person who's losing then someone else will win really quickly and you won't have time to win yourself but the other thing is that uh someone one of the other factions also has to keep the vagabond in check and you never score any points for attacking the Vagabond, so no one wants to do it. <laughs> it's really funny. Um, yes, Gavin. The uh, so the automated boards are produced by a chap called Benjamin, who I'm going to keep crediting because I can't. I don't know his second name. But uh, hey, Dustin, how you doing, mate? Thanks for stopping by. Uh, but uh, this chap Benjamin, he he made all of these things, these automated resources available on Board Game Geek uh, for free, and you can go and just download them and print and play them and. All of that, and actually, um, then they, um, then they, the leader games who make the game, they they produce it as an official expansion, and what you're paying for really is just everything sort of produced, you know, at, at, a, at a level of the components of the other elements of the game. But naughty leader games, what they did do is they misprinted actually one of the AI boards. It happens to be the one I'm not using, which was not deliberate because it's not too difficult to parse the mistake. Uh, parse around the mistake but the um they did say that they would make a corrected board available cheap on the website when they do a retail print run of the game which will be in early 2021 i think so um just a heads up if you are if you have an official copy of the clockwork expansion there is a misprint on the airy board and for pretty much everyone who has no idea of how the game works this won't make any sense but when the Aerie is choosing priority for moving to clearings, they prioritize clearings with no roost first, and then clearings with the fewest enemy warriors. So that's in the wrong order on the Aerie board, but only in one part of it. So it's, it's like in the main body of the text, it's in the wrong order. But if you look at the clearing priority tiebreakers underneath, it's in the correct order. So there you go. Uh, you can find an errated version of that on BGG as well, which you can download and print out and glue onto your board if that's how you're so inclined or, or very carefully uh, place it on top. Um, however you want to do that is up to you. Um, but anyway, heads up. So, oh, thanks for stopping by, Justin, and saying hi. That's so nice. Um, so, and have a great day. So uh, anyway, without further ado, I think we're actually all set up and ready to start playing the game. And so the game will begin with a random player. And actually, you're instructed, if you're playing in the, 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 the game with uh, humans and everything, to randomize your seating order and randomize a starting player. And so that's pretty interesting that that sort of functions that way. What we're going to do is we're going to say the mechanical marquee is zero, and the underground duchy is three, and we're going to go one, uh, zero, one, two, three, and I'm just going to roll a die to see who will be the starting player. Did I get my hand? I didn't get my hand of three cards. One, two, three. All right, so I'm going to keep these face up. Normally your hand would be hidden, but I'm on stream and there's no one else here to spy on me. So I've got two bird cards and a fox card. And there are two sort of functions to the cards. There's what the cards themselves do, and then there's also the suits of the cards. And both are really important, and we'll talk about this when we get to my turn, unless I start. But... Um, I, I just I look at this artwork. I just adore all the artwork on these cards. Every single one of them. Great. There's the Fox Blacksmith. 
working on the anvil, and there's a, there's a little bird making a soup kitchen. Mm. So, anyway, let's uh, let's find out who's going to start. Wee! That's a zero, so it's the Marquis de Cap, which means I will play last, which makes me sad. But uh, never mind, eh? We'll, we'll, mole people will have their day. So, we start by revealing an order card. And this is, uh, this is the AI specific rules here. This is not how you would play with real people, but um, we'll look how sort of a real person functions when we get to my turn. But uh, every faction has sort of the same basic structure to their turn, which is three phases, birdsong, daylight, and evening. And the birdsong is kind of like uh, the beginning phase where something sort of automatically happens, a bit of setup. And then the daylight is usually where you'll take your actions and make your decisions and do all the important stuff. And the evening tends to be a bit like a score points and cleanup phase. And it's really helpful that every faction goes through that process of birdsong, daylight, evening, even though what they do within those phases is very different. So what we're going to do is reveal an order card for the Marquis de Cat. And we're going to hope it's not a bird card, because if it's a bird card, he goes nuts. It's a bird card. So the Marquis de Cat... <laughs> we'll uh, start by, if there was a, so there is a nice little tableau of items up here that can be crafted, and these items can be crafted for points, and once they're crafted, they basically have no use to the player who made them, but the Vagabond will come and buy them and give you cards if he comes and buys them from you. Um, but uh, uh, when uh, when a automated robot player draws a card, if it's a crafting card, they will craft the item on the card, but uh, it, this is not a crafting card, so we're just going to go straight past the crafting of Birdsong. And different factions craft at different times. The cats craft in the morning during Birdsong. So now it's daylight, and we've got this daylight phase. But over here we've got escalated daylight, which is essentially a sort of aggro cats. Like cats are mad. Whatever's going on in the forest, they don't like it. You know, they want to quell the uprisings and stop the people. And if you happen to draw a bird card, and there are the four suits in the deck, there are birds and then there are the three suits that are present on the board so bunnies mice and rabbits and uh ah, bun I, I said bunny twice bunny mice and fox are the three main suits which are the same suits you can see on the clearings on the board here so you got your fox your uh, mice and your bunnies bunnies are yellow mice are orange and fox are red and um all those suits are present in the game so you can see on the fox card that i i drew earlier that's a red card but the bird cards are wild, and they tend to be more powerful than the other three the other three suits. So that's why, in this case, the bird card has been used to trigger the aggro cat. So here we go, triggering aggro cat. And the first thing that happens is the cat battles in all clearings. So they just trigger a battle in literally every clearing they're present in. Fortunately, this is the first round of the game, and there's actually no conflict on the board at all yet. Because the Vagabond is here in the forest, and I'm over here... Uh, with no cats. So, in the only clearing with no enemies. If the Eerie was in the game, this would actually also be full of birds, and would be be sharing. Um, so, fortunately that doesn't happen. So then they're going to recruit a bunch of warriors. The cat recruits every turn, they just uh, spew out warriors. And so we're going to get two warriors, and they're going to go to the lowest priority clearings that they control. Uh, they rule. And rule is a really important mechanic. So every clearing will have a ruler, well, actually, that's not true. Sometimes there's no ruler because the ruler is the one with the most power in the clearing, and that's the total number of buildings and warriors. So in this case, the cat rules all the clearings except for this one, which I rule. Oh, I should lay my moles down. There we go. So I rule this clearing because I have two moles, so I have a power of two in there. I rule that clearing. The cat rules all other clearings. They have a power of one in every clearing except for this one where they have a power of three because they have two buildings, and this one where they have a power of two because they've got a warrior in a building. Um, the power of three is two buildings in a war. So, rule is really important. It's actually less important in the automated game, which is really interesting because uh, the automated alliance don't really move around and the uh, Vagabot actually gives no cares about rule at all. So the only characters in this game that are going to be worried about who rules the clearings as we move around are the cat and me, the underground duchy. So, here we go. We're going to get four cats, and we're going to put them in the lowest priority clearings of the cat's rule, which are, of course, 11 and 12. And remember that low priority means bottom of the to-do list, so the highest numbers. 
So we distribute those evenly. So now there's a whole bunch of cats hanging out in the middle of the board. And then they're going to do a build action. And they build a building from their tableau here based on the clearing with the most soldiers in it. So we've got two actually clearings now with three soldiers. So they're going to pick one of those two. And they're going to do it based on highest priority. So in this case, 11 is higher up on the to-do list than 12. And they're going to build a building based on the card that they chose. It's a bird card. So it's a wild suit. So normally, uh, if it was a fox card, they'd build sawmills. If it was a bunny, they'd build workshops. And if it was a mouse, they'd build recruiters. But it's a bird card, so they're going to choose the row that has the most buildings out. So they're, the cat wants to build all of the buildings of one type, because that's going to unlock massive points for them. But uh, they, I mean, if you were playing as the cat as a human, you'd want to kind of mix it up a bit, because each building does different things for you. But... The mechanical cat doesn't care about what buildings it builds, it just wants to spurge buildings out on the board, ideally all from one track. So in this case, it's going to pick a sawmill, because sawmill breaks ties between um, a choice of all three. And they're going to build the sawmill here in clearing 11. And now they're going to start getting points whenever they trigger this top row. So after that, they're going to move, and they're going to move warriors from clearings with three or more. None of their clearings have three or more warriors, so they're not actually going to do any movement. And because this is an escalated daylight phase, and honestly, this is not the best way to start explaining how these guys operate with an escalated daylight phase, but never mind. That's how the game panned out, and that's what we're doing. So now they would actually move big armies around and trigger battles again. So they'd just murder everything at the start of the day, and then murder again at the end of the daylight phase. So that's a nightmare, but uh, fortunately they actually don't have any big armies yet. They've only got these two clearings with three, but uh, they still move any of those because they have to move clearings with more than three warriors. So great, the daylight, escalated daylight phase is over, and then they're going to score, and they're going to score points for, because it's a bird, normally they'd score points based on the track that corresponds to the card they'd flipped over. Because it's a bird card, which is a wild, they'll pick the track with the most buildings from it, so sawmills in this case. So they're going to get one point. So the Marky the Cat earns one point, and they're now winning the game, technically. Then they discard the order card, and we move on to the next player, which is going to be the Automated Alliance. <laughs> I'm not cheery, Lee. I'm just putting on... This is my, uh, this is my you know, coping face, coping with the, uh, the murder, the murder uh, that's going to happen soon. Uh, well, I'll just take a quick sip of coffee. Mmm. Cat murder is definitely going to happen. Although, I'll tell you who's great at murdering huge armies of cats. The Vagabond. So we'll see what happens. Um, but now we're going over to the Automated Alliance. And actually, I found... So, well, I'll get to what happens here in a minute. Mm. Let's see what order card they've got. Oh, it's another bird card. God damn it. So they also go nuts with bird cards. Um, and Oh, by the way, that's uh, a Corvid. Uh, conspiracy, conspiracist, conspira, uh, conspirator, um, talking to two cats, soldiers, and I just love his derpy look. And the thing about the Corvids is they actually ignore rule as well, so they're another faction that doesn't care about rules clearings. And if you craft this card, you get this unique asymmetrical power here that lets you move like Corvids, so you can ignore rule as well, which is pretty cool. So it's essentially this derpy looking guy is actually like helping you logistically with your armies. But suffice to say, that's not what we're doing right now. What we're doing right now is triggering off play for the Automated Alliance with a bird order card. And so it's not a crafting card. Again, a crafting card will specifically have an item on it like... So this is a crafting card. It's got a, a, a brown box, and it'll show one of the tokens from the crafting set at the top of the board and a number of points. And so you can build this anvil, or you can build this hammer on the anvil and then discard this card for two points. Um, the automated characters actually don't get all these points they get one point no matter what they craft but that's because they don't actually need resources to craft every other faction every human faction so every human player needs to generate resources somehow by control by being present or controlling clearings on the board or building buildings on the board but the the ai players don't have to do that they don't worry about that so that's pretty cool um it's, it just makes things simpler and easier to parse, which I, I fully appreciate. So, anyway, in this case, no crafting this time. So, what, uh, the, what they normally do, the um, alliances, they would try to revolt first, where they've generated 
sympathy amongst the people of the forest. At the moment, they've got no sympathy at all because they've got, um, they haven't yet started their propaganda. And I say propaganda. I actually sympathize with the Woodland Alliance. I think they're the most sympathetic faction, um, which is why their, their main thing is called sympathy, I suppose. But they haven't yet started to, to generate momentum for their, their uprising, their protests. So what's going to happen here is normally they would try to revolt first where we would look for sympathy for the Woodland Alliance on the board. But uh, because it's a bird card, it means they revolt after putting out sympathy. So they're much more likely to revolt, which is great. Um, fortunately, hopefully, they won't revolt for where I am because that would just wipe me off the board straight away. So hopefully they're going to kill some cats now. Um, which makes sense because the cats are the oppressors. As we all know, they're assholes of wanton cruelty. Um, so... If they don't revolt in the... So the, the way it works for the, the automated alliance here is that they're going to um, try to craft the card. Then they're going to try to do a revolt. And if it's a bird card, they skip this. And that's important because if they don't revolt in the bird song phase, then they trigger something called public pity where they get a bunch of sympathy on the board. They put out two sympathy tokens if they're at four or fewer. So if they have... Um, oh, where are my buttons? four or fewer sympathy tokens on the board, they'll put out two with public pity. And then they also spread sympathy as well. So they, they're they going to get three sympathy tokens out on the board. And then if it's a bird card, then they do a surprise revolt where they revolt anyway. Good Lord. So they get points by putting out these tokens. And they're going to start by... The, and this is actually a bit tricky, I think. Um, I've got here actually something to show you because I found that parsing where they were going to spread sympathy was the most difficult thing to work out um, just based on the text I found myself reading the text on the board over and over again and it's not misprinted um, it's just hard to parse mentally for me so I went on to board game geek and actually Benjamin the guy who designed these races he had made a um, a little uh, he made a little priority sort of thing here where he talks about um, the priority for if there's sympathy on the board, if there's not sympathy on the board, and how the alliance chooses. So I, I found this really, really helpful to figuring out how how to parse these guys. And I meant to print it off, but I didn't. So now I'm just going to have to have my phone on the table. But essentially, if there's no sympathy on the board at all, then they're going to start by putting a sympathy token matching a clearing that matches the order card. But the order card's a bird card, which is wild. That can be any clearing. So then we check the next the next criteria, which is the clearing with the fewest enemy warriors, which is going to be one of these clearings with one cat in. And then we're going to check for highest priority. So in this case, it's going to be this clearing up here because there's one cat warrior and it's a priority two clearing. So they're going to start their uprising in there. And then they're going to spread out from here and the first sympathy token is worth no points, but these next two are worth one point. They lose points if they spread into clearings with too many enemy warriors, because those guys are like guarding the clearing, and they're sort of like, get out of here, you upstarts. Don't do that. It's bad for us. We don't like it. So, <laughs> oh, Leah, I'm not sure I can make those jokes. Um, <laughs> but uh, we, we support the mice. It's true. So they're, what they're going to do now is there is um, there is sympathy on the board. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for an adjacent... Again, it's um, fewest enemy warriors here and based on priority. So they're actually going to put one out here and one out here. Because they when there's one on the board, they look start looking for adjacency to the existing sympathy. And they're going to get one point for that and one point for that. So they're immediately going to jump up two points. And now what they're going to do is they're going to have a surprise revolt. Surprise, guys. I bet you didn't expect us. I mean, nobody expects the, the the bunny inquisition. That took too long. Sorry. My brain was loading. So they can only revolt in clearings where they have a base on their board that matches the clearing type. So they've got three bases, one for each suit. A fox base, a bunny base, and a mouse base. And they're going to revolt in... Well, mouse or bunny, because those are the ones that match. So, in this case, the revolt is the clearing that um, 
matches the, the base, and because they have a choice, again, they're just going to come back to, in this case, they're going to come back to priority clearing. So we're going to put the mouse base out here, and when a revolt takes place, all enemy pieces are removed, and that's significant, because a piece is warriors, it's buildings, and it's tokens. So if there was a revolt here, all of these would go away. If there was a revolt here, all of it would go away. Here, they'd kill everything. But in this case, they just kill one cat warrior because there's only one cat in there. But now they've got their base in there, their mousy base. And at the end of their turn, they get to organize, which is something they can't do yet, so we'll look at it later. And then they recruit. So they recruit one little warrior into the clearing up there. And ideally, what I want is to just keep them away from me. If they could just, like, undermine the... <laughs> if, they, uh, if they could just undermine the... Um cats and kill the cats that would be great i would love that we'll see what happens but basically i just got to keep their sympathy out of the clearings that i want to use for my benefits so we result we then discard the order card because we've resolved the um automated alliance and now what we're going to do is the vagabond so the vagabond draws a card and it is a crafting card so the vagabond will craft a teapot and oh my god just look at this card you guys it's so cute. Oh my god, it's nice having tea. We just saw how vicious they are. We know that they have a violent streak underneath. Or maybe they're just fighting because they have to. Because society is not doing them right. And that's fair enough, man. You know, the cats are not treating them well. In any case, the Vagamond is going to craft a teapot. So we take the teapot token here from the crafting area. And we put it here in the satchel. Normally... Uh, there's a crafted items area on each board where these items would go to and then the vagabond can come and buy them from people the vagabot is and the vagabond use these for actions so they go straight into the satchel which is this area here let me see if i can get you guys a better view of this without destroying my whole board one day i will have longer usb cables and more cameras i tried so hard to get that set up for this one but it just didn't work out. No, nope, this is not going to get a good shot. I'm sorry, guys. I could not organize it. Um, so, in any case, what we've got going on here is um, one point for the Vagabond for crafting. Bam. And then we're going to go straight into their Daylight Phase. And essentially, they just kind of have a string of actions that they take based on the card they've turned over. So... The first thing that we do when we get a mouse card is quest. And that means they're going to try and complete this quest up here. So he's going to head to a fox clearing. There are three fox clearings he has access to at the moment. The fox clearings being these clearings with the red fox marker. And adjacent to the forest he's in, which is this massive forest that's all up here in the middle of the board. So huge forest. And there's our vagabond there. He's in this forest here. So he will do a explore. And when he explores, he goes to the nearest clearing with a oh no sorry explore is not quest my no we are doing a quest it's not a fox card it's a mouse card come on brain keep up um so we're doing a quest so we're going to go to the nearest fox clearing and because it's even we're going to go based on priority so we're going to go to clearing five so we have to flip over a little token like this which is exhausting the token to go here into clearing number five and then we have to flip over two tokens to complete the quest so we give a rousing speech and we say, this is why you should support me, the Vagabond, instead of anyone else, because they're all crazy. So we give this great speech, and everyone's incredibly impressed with us. And as a result, we get a point. Bam. And then a new quest comes out. Logistics help in a mouse clearing. So we're going to go to the mouse clearing and help them sort out their logistics, because everyone knows the key to a successful military is a good supply chain. Okay. But uh, after Quest, he moves on to Aid, which is actually where he's going to try to buy items from someone in his clearing. In this case, it's only the cat, and also the cat has no items. So we'll skip right over Aid, and we'll go straight to battle. So now he's going to murder the player who's in the lead, which is actually the Woodland Alliance, because they had that crazy bird card. So they've got the most points. Well, actually, they're tied with the Vagabond, but he's not going to try and kill himself. So he's going to flip over a token here. And he's going to walk into this clearing here because it's the nearest clearing with Woodland Alliance presence. And this clearing, actually, the presence is just the sympathy token, but we can still kill the sympathy tokens. Um, it, it's, it's sort of like, uh, imagine the Vagabond is Geralt of Riviera basically coming into the town and saying, don't be assholes to the king. 
So we're going to flip over one token to trigger the battle. And now we're going to do a battle. Normally I would roll the dice and do a whole thing. But because it's a token and it's defenseless, there's no enemy warriors here, we can safely just say that he kills it. So he kills the token. If there were more than one token, I might have to roll. But with one token that is defenseless, he just destroys it, which earns him one more point. When you take an enemy piece off the board, you get a point. Well, that's not true. When you take an enemy token or building off the board, you get a point. So cardboard piece. If it's a wooden piece, i.e. a warrior, then no points for that. The Vagabond cannot ever be removed from the board, actually, because he's a special piece. He's the only one. He can't come off the board, but he can be very badly hurt if a fight ensues. So we'll see. Anyway, that is the battle. He's exhausted all of his tokens, so he's actually done his turn. And if he'd taken any damage, which would be down here, um, he would not refresh as many tokens. But because he hasn't taken any damage, he gets all five tokens back. He actually gets six, but he doesn't have six yet. So there we go. And then the card, he would repair damaged items now as well, but there are none. So the card is discarded, and it's my turn. Yes, I get to play human player me. So the first thing that happens on the mole turn is I get to have a warrior just show up in the burrow. And that's good. So there we go, one warrior in the burrow. And now I get two actions. And my actions are like super inefficient. Um, if, you know, if the mole people move, they move once, and uh, a movement is any number of warriors between two clearings. So from here to here, or from here to here, but any number of warriors. The cats have a, a similar action called march, where they get to move two clearings. So they can move a lot more quickly and efficiently, and it makes me sad. They also get three. Yes, Empire of the Rising Burrow. We are rising up to show you our, our the might of our underground empire we're probably not the good guys but uh, with these two actions really what i want to do is just get a building out on the board and i'm thinking i might actually just i mean ideally also i would get to um hire someone so my job as the mole people really is to get these noble mole folk onto my side here we'll just um bring this camera out a bit more here doo -doo -doo, so i can show you the mole people um but uh, what I'm trying to do really is just convince the mole nobility to support the war against the land dwellers. So we've got here these, uh, these are the mole nobility and they start off as squires who are a bit useless. But they're kind of helpful because they let me take extra actions. And we've got all these different squires, the different types that give different actions. And they're the easiest to sort of convince to support the cause. And then we've got these nobles. And they are a bit more difficult to convince, but then they bring more power with them, if you can convince them. And then at the top, you've got the lords, who are the most difficult to convince of the war effort, to join the war effort and support it. But if you do convince them, they're worth tons of points, and then they just give you a method to earn more points. So really, you need, like, you'll probably only get, like, one lord at the end of the game, but you'll get a ton of points once you do that. So that's pretty good. I mean, I say a ton of points. You'll get three points for recruiting a lord. But you'll also get um, points for triggering the Lord, the um, triggering the Lord's uh, ability once you've got the Lord. So what we're essentially doing is unlocking additional actions we can take and earning points at the same time. So we want to be able to do that. I found getting a squire on the first turn is quite tricky. But uh, what I need to be doing is present in clearings on the board. So essentially, I need to get my mole presence out there and say, "Hey, guys." You know, I'm, I'm here. So what I think I might do actually is take a, a dig action. My concern is that the cat will just murder me if I show up. Um, yeah, I've only got two actions. I'll need to make one of them a dig if I want to get presence on the board. So yeah, I mean, building these buildings as well is super good. I've got these citadels that allow me to recruit additional troops. And these uh, markets that allow me to draw more cards, both of which are super important. But I think uh, maybe we should focus on presence. So we get only two actions because we are slow, blind mole people. So the first action, I think, will be to recruit a mole into the bara. So when you recruit, the moles always go into the bara. But then what we can do is we can reveal from our hand, and these are face up for your benefit, but the cards would normally be in my hand. But now I would reveal to everyone at the table one card face up. This is the dig action. I'm taking the dig action. That matches a clearing that I want to appear in. And I can now just pop out the ground in a fox clearing. Like, hey, surprise! 
everybody it's me um and actually no i do need to do a fox clearing i was just trying to be clever there overthink my, myself so oh thanks for watching last day and um hopefully you'll be able to catch up later on the uh the channel but uh thank you so much have a lovely day um anyway so we're gonna get one of our tunnel tokens here and we've got three tunnels so we can have three tunnels on the board at any given time, but we can always fill a tunnel in and move it somewhere else. Um, it's also possible the enemy might destroy our tunnels. But uh, I think we're going to pop up down here, because it's not too far from our pre-existing place. It's far from where the Woodland Alliance currently are, and it's not right next to the cat's base. So we're going to pop up here, and we're going to be able to, when we do a dig action, we reveal this card, and uh, then we have to spend it which means discard it. And then we can move up to four moles from the borough into the clearing. So we're gonna put the two moles that we've got in the borough into the clearing. And nothing further happens. So as you may have gathered from the view here, the animals of the different factions can perfectly peacefully coexist in each clearing. They don't automatically go to war, they just Sometimes they have to trigger fights because sometimes you need people to get out of your clearing and make some space for you, you know what I mean? So I don't trigger a battle automatically. Now I'm just living here with this cat, but now it's two power to one, so I rule this clearing, uh, which is useful, I guess, but not right now because now I've done my two actions. I can take the actions of the ministers, and this is important, basically, or the nobles. So um, they actually do call them ministers, but, uh, but I guess because some of them are actually called nobles, aren't they? Yeah, so that's to avoid confusion. So there are the three ministers, which are lords, nobles, and squires. But um, it's important to know that you get your two actions first, and then you can take the actions of any recruited ministers. Um, but I haven't recruited any, uh, so I can't do that. So now what I can do is reveal cards from my hand that match the clearings where I have presence. And the number of cards I can reveal will determine which ministers I can recruit. So, so uh, yeah. So... I've actually got two bird cards, which is both good and bad, and I'll explain why. Because the bird cards I reveal are actually wild, just like bird cards are. So I can actually, I'm present in two clearings. I would need a fox and a bunny card to reveal if I wanted to recruit someone for these two clearings, because they've got to match the suit. They've got to match the clearing suit. But because these are bird cards, it doesn't matter. I just need to be in two clearings, which I have achieved. So I can hire one squire. And I think the squire I'm going to hire is probably the Initiate a Battle Squire. Or maybe it's the build, a Building Squire. Oh, you guys, I don't know whether I want the Initiate a Battle Squire or the Build a Building Squire. The reason, Normally I would take the Build a Building Squire, almost for sure. The reason I'm thinking maybe I want Initiate a Battle Squire is because of the Woodland Alliance's sympathy. Like, if they put it out in my clearing, I want to get rid of it, like, right away. So I want to just trigger a battle right away to clear up that sympathy. Because if you're in a clearing with sympathy and the base is on the board, then there is a chance you will suffer revolt, and you don't want that. So I think... Also, clearing away the sympathy is get your points, which is good. Everybody wants points, 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 points. So, um... Do, 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 but I do need buildings. We're taking the captain. We're taking the war guy. Okay, so we're recruiting this war guy. And what happens is we get to take one of these little crowns off of our board here. And we've got these little wooden crowns to put here. And the way I kind of do this is, so you put the crown here to show that you've hired this guy, right? And then um, you get some points for putting out the crown. Under each crown is a symbol, so for every squire it's one point, for every noble the next level up it's two, and for every lord it's three points. But what's uh, what's interesting about this is that um, is that um, yeah the, the the crowns can't come back, so you can lose the lords, you can actually lose their favor if you mess up, but you will never get the crowns back. So you have to start getting these more fair anyway. Um, and later on, actually, what I like to do as well is uh, if I'm taking actions, like if I take this guy's action, I like to lie the crown down to show I've done the action so I can remember which lord's actions, I, which minister's actions I've used. That's helpful. Um, so anyway, the, the, the squire is just going to go here, and I'm going to put a little crown on it. And the crown reveals a plus one here on the board, so I know I get one point for doing that. So I'm still kind of trailing, but don't worry, because it's a slow start, 
and then boom yes the crown is very cute um <laughs> oh yeah Hangers, that's uh that's the great escape isn't it oh god i have i wa i watched that movie so much when i was a kid and i haven't seen that movie in a really long time um god great soundtrack as well so much fun so revealed cards would then go back to my hand but they don't if they're bird cards bird cards are so powerful that if you do reveal them to do anything with them unfortunately you must discard them which is the bad side of using the bird cards for that but i think it benefits us because we get a minister out right away and we can now initiate battles and that gets us extra actions because like i said we only get two actions they're not super efficient so we really need the ministers to be able to do something yeah, Watership Down, and also uh, Redwall as well. It sort of reminds me of Redwall as well, although I haven't read all of those books. Um, anyway, that is uh, now the, the end of my turn. And actually, if I had any buildings on the board, so at, unlike the cats, at the, I, I craft at the end of my turn. And if I had any buildings on the board, I could now craft, but I don't, so I can't. So I draw cards equal to one plus the number of markets. I only have no markets, so I get one card, and it's a fox card. Cool. Look at this. This is the false orders card. So uh, we can actually craft this card and then discard it during our turn to essentially force the enemy armies to march away. So that might be useful to do, but I suspect we'll probably need this card to spend to build buildings or tunnels or something later on. But we'll see. So with that in mind, it's actually the end of the mole turn and we're back to the market cat. So I'm going to start doing this a bit faster, guys, because otherwise we're going to be here forever. But I will do my best to, I've been sort of explaining a bit about how these things work as we go, but now uh, I'm going to explain a little less detail about how the choices are making and just sort of explain what's happening. So here we go. Here's the cat's card. So it's not a bird card, so we're going to go do regular daylight. It's not a crafting card, so we'll skip over crafting. So we're going to start by triggering a battle in each fox clearing, okay? So actually the cats are going to trigger a battle here, here, here. There's no enemies. And here with me. God damn it, cats. So now I can finally explain to you guys how um, combat works. So here's my fancy dice tower, and I'm just going to throw... Whenever you do a combat, you just throw both of the dice into the tower. And there's a whole opportunity... If you're playing with human players, there are these things called ambush cards, which you can play if you're the defender to screw up the attacker's army, and then the attacker can also play an uh, ambush card to nope your ambush card. So it kind of like it can cancels them out. But we don't use ambush cards against AI, because AI hate ambushes. So we're not allowed to use those ambush cards. So they're actually useless in a game where you're playing against 3AI. But never mind. Um, they are still useful for other things. All of the cards that are multi-purpose. So they're still useful. Anyway, here we go. Dice. Dice. I've rolled a 1 and a 2. Let me explain what this means. So here we've got uh, the cat uh, fighting against my army of mole people. Ah. And when you... Are, the aggressor always has an advantage in conflict in route. So the aggressor always takes the die with the higher number on it and assigns it to their army. Then the and the defender gets the die with the lower number. If they're the same, the defender's like, yes! And if they're if it's a three and a zero, the defender's like, oh no! And then uh, what you do is that's the number of hits that you've scored. There's then an opportunity here to add extra hits if you have something that allows you to add extra hits. But uh, we don't have anything in this case that's going to do that. But the extra hits is important because... The um, the first thing that happens actually is that the, the hits on the die, so in this case we've got a 2, but the 2 is actually reduced to 1 because the number on the die can never exceed the number of warriors that you have. So in this case I could do a maximum of 2 hits because I have 2 warriors, and the cat can only do 1 hit because it's only got 1 warrior, so we'll turn that down to 1. You don't have to change the die face so long as you remember. Then you can add extra hits, and the important thing to note about adding extra hits is that they can go over the number of warriors that you have. So you always get the extra hits, even if you don't have enough warriors otherwise. So that's really, really uh, useful. Um, and so the basically what happens here, though, is because there's no extra hits, a mole dies and the cat dies. Bam. Nobody gets any points because no tokens were removed, no buildings were destroyed, and that's the end of the conflict. Super easy to resolve. And so uh, that's the only battle we've got in the battle phase. So now it's the recruit phase, where the cat will recruit four warriors spread amongst the fox clearings that they rule. Um, and that's uh, another important thing there. So remember we talked about rule earlier. The cat actually rules all of the fox clearings except for the one I'm in now. Um, and they didn't rule that clearing anyway. I ruled it. So what they do is they put one soldier out. They evenly distribute them amongst the fox clearings. And then the, the final soldier goes into the clearing of highest 
priority. Now remember, when we were recruiting in the escalated daylight phase, it was lowest priority. In the regular daylight phase, it's highest priority. So uh, in this case, that's space number five. And then we're going to build, and because it's a fox card, we're going to build a sawmill. So that's great for us. The cat's just getting all the sawmills. And this will be built into the space with the most cat warriors, which just so happens to be 12. It doesn't necessarily need to be a fox clearing. The, the suit in this case is determining what we build, not where we build it. Where we build it is always the space with the most warriors. Um, of course, you know, if there's space for the building, right? Um, and that they rule it. They also have to rule it. Um, and so what we're going to do next is we're going to, do they have to rule it? Yes. Rule with the most marquee warriors. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a move. And we didn't do this last time because there wasn't enough warriors on the board. Now there is. This space will move because any space with more than three warriors does move. And the, uh, they're going to the clearing with the most enemy pieces that is adjacent, which is interesting because that's actually a tie, a tie between the Woodland Alliance clearing up here, which only has one warrior, but does have three pieces because it's got the sympathy and the building and all of these are pieces. I've also got three pieces. I've got two warriors and the tunnel down here. So we're going to break the tie by, I assume, highest priority because whenever you're choosing a clearing, if there is no, first use the priorities on the board. If there's no extra priorities on the board, just go to prior, the highest priority. So they're gonna go up here because this is two and I'm in three. So the cat's like, hey, I don't like what's going on up here with this woodland uprising. We do not approve. Um, and so then, the, then they will expand. And expand means that if they didn't build a building as a part of this card, then they will draw a whole new card and have another turn. But uh, they did build a building, so fortunately they're not going to be expanding this round. And that means it's the end of their turn. So in the evening they're going to score points and they're going to score sawmills because they had a fox card, which I've prematurely discarded. So they're going to get two points for that. So they're going to go up to three points. They are now in the lead. And then they discard their order card and we're all good. So now we're over to the automated alliance. Not a bird card, please, guys. Let's find out what happens here. It's... A little mouse card. Oh, and look at him. He's, he's it's heavy as mouse mouse logistics. Okay, so uh, it is a crafting card. They're craft a boot. So we take the boot. We put it here in the crafted items section of the board. Let me see if I can get this camera over here so you guys can see. So there we go. There's the boot that they've just crafted. Now, again, if you're a human player, you need shit to do this. But they're not a human player. They're just a. Um, they're just a, a robot, so they don't care about paying the price. And then they get one point. You always get one point, even though some crafting cards are worth more. So now I am very clearly uh, behind one. Everyone else is on three. But don't worry, guys. I'm, I'll catch up. I make big leaps towards the end. I have to build up my army, unlike the AI who makes steady progress. So never be demoralized if you're losing right at the start of a game against the bots and root. Okay, so now they're going to try to revolt in a mouse clearing. The thing is, you can't revolt if you don't have the base. So the mouse base is the one that's out, so they can't revolt. So we go straight to public pity, where they're going to spread two sympathy tokens. And they're going to spread two because they have fewer than five out. So uh, we're now going to look for mouse clearings adjacent to existing sympathy. And we've got one here, and that's it. So now we're going to prioritize between one of these three. And I'm going to get my little chart out again because I can never remember how to parse this one. And my chart says matching clearing, which we've done, and then fewest enemy soldier warriors, which is sadly uh, me. God damn it. I'm going to have to destroy that because otherwise I'm going to get a bunny uprising and I don't want it. So um, they get two points for that because there's not three warriors in either of these clearings. And then we are going to uh, go straight to spread sympathy where they're going to put out another token. And now they're going to go here into eight because this has the fewest... And it's also, well, actually, they're going to go here today because it's a mouse clearing. Um, and they get another point for that. Bam. Good God. Somebody stop them. There's no surprise revolt because it's not bird card. So they are going to organize, but they don't do any organizing yet. So we're going to recruit one more warrior into here. They recruit actually one warrior at every base, but there's only one. So that turn is over. We discard the mouse card there, and we are over to the Vagabot. Come on, Vagabot, kill some mice, kill some mice. So I've revealed a mouse card. It's not a crafting card. So we're going to go straight to daylight. There's a function here where he slips into the forest if he's wounded, but he's not wounded. So 
Yeah, right. Um, Boo! We need Boo. Boo is a hamster, though. Um, wait, that's not Minsk. Is it Minsk? Have I got the right Minsk? Anyway, um, what we're going to do is we're going to... That's uh, me trying to read chat and failing. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by questing. So we're going to do another... Oh, yeah, he had a mouse card last time. Stop questing and kill some cats. Um, so in order to quest, we must go to a mouse clearing. We're in one. So he just flips over two of his action tokens here. It's two action tokens to do a quest. And he gets point. Bam. Quest completed. And then we get another card. And this time it's... Oh, he's going to go give a speech for the rabbits. See how he's giving a speech for the foxes last time? This guy, he's a total profiteer. Just goes wherever he thinks he's going to make money. Um, there's all kinds of cool stuff that happens with quests if you're a real human. But uh, the AI just kind of goes to different clearings and triggers them. Um... Also, all of these symbols on these tokens, by the way, if you are a human vagabond, are super duper important. And if you're a robot vagabond, are completely irrelevant. So we're just looking at the number of tokens he has. So he's done questing, so now he's going to aid, and he still can't... Um, oh, he can buy from the Automated Alliance, because he's in this clearing, and it's any faction with pieces. So there's a sympathetic Woodland Alliance agent here in this clearing who's going to sell our vagabond some boots. So he flips over this token here, and he takes the boots from the Woodland Alliance, so now he has an extra action token to use, and he actually, that triggers an extra combat power. So this teapot moves up here, and I'll explain that in just a minute. But what happens is when he buys this from another player, that player gets to draw a card. And if he bought multiple items, you'd get more than one card, which is great. However, bots don't have cards, so instead bots just get points. So he's just given a point to the winner. Thanks, Vagabot. Good job, buddy. Um, so the Vagabot has three a battle track up here. And uh, these are three spaces that fill in when he unlocks a certain number of tokens that are not damaged. So as if tokens get damaged, uh, he takes damage in combat, they'll move down here. And you always start... If you're moving tokens out of the satchel, you always start with the grey exhausted tokens first, and then move on to the white unexhausted tokens. And so... Um, if uh, he takes enough damage, these will come back down. But when he has six tokens in the satchel, the sixth token moves up here. And what this does is it unlocks his ability to do more damage in combat. Now, the real human Vagabond does this differently by unlocking sword tokens. But uh, the robot just trigger triggers these off and he loses them if he takes damage. So, we've now done aid and now we're going to battle. And he's going to move to a clearing with the win pieces of the winning faction. Well, the winning faction is currently the Woodland Alliance, and he's in the clearing with those pieces. So he's going to destroy the sympathy. So he flips over a token to initiate a battle. And again, we'd roll the dice, but we don't have to because it's just one defenseless token. So he destroys this and earns a point. Good job, Vagabond. And now his final thing is to repair, but he's got nothing to repair. So that's the end of his turn. And at the end of his turn, he will refresh these tokens here. And discard this card. Bam. Over to me. It's my turn again. Yes. So the first thing that happens is we recruit a mole into the borough. Good job. And now we are going to get to two, two actions. And I must think about my life choices here, people. Um, I need to initiate a battle. Fortunately, I have the squire to do that later. I think what I want to do is build a building in this clearing here. So I think what I'm going to do is move my mole into this clearing because I'm a little concerned about this situation up here with all the cats. I don't want to build a building and then immediately lose it. You see, what happens is if we build buildings above ground as the mole people, it helps us to convince the, the, um, it helps us to convince the, uh, ministers, the ministers that they should join our side. And actually really what it does, is it helps us recruit soldiers and draw more cards, which we like to do. However, if one of those buildings is destroyed, it makes us look bad in the underground duchy political sphere and they're like they're like you're doing a bad job and so we don't want the buildings to be destroyed with that in mind i have to in order to do a build i have to reveal a card from my hand that matches the clearing i'm building in so i reveal a fox card and i'm going to put a citadel out in here the citadel will allow us to get more soldiers at the beginning of the turn when we recruit in the borough for free so there's a free recruit at the beginning of the turn citadel is bringing more troops you can also recruit one troop at a time uh, during by taking an action, but it's so inefficient. It's almost not worth it. So we've revealed this Fox card now, so we cannot reveal it again this turn. 
And that's a little bit problematic because we don't have a lot of cards. But never mind. So that's our two actions. We moved and then we built. So now we can do our noble, our minister actions. So I'm going to flip this little crown here down to initiate a battle here in this clearing where I'm just going to destroy this sympathy marker because I don't want the Woodland Alliance to revolt in here. And that gets me one point. So I'm still losing, but don't worry, guys, because we're building up to something big. Um, and then I can reveal cards to hire another minister. Don't have any in hand, but uh, what I can do is pick this card back up. And then I can actually uh, craft it. And I can craft it now if I want. Uh, for false orders. Um, I think I'm going to keep it in hand for now rather than crafting it. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I think I'd be better off saving it to try and hire ministers. I don't really need the false orders yet. And when I do need them and I haven't crafted this, I will be kicking myself. So that will be funny for you. So um, now I get to draw one more card. And it's a, it's a mouse... Um, crafting card so a mouse with a giant sword it's a final fantasy mouse card and that goes over here into my hand and the vagabond did kill the woodland alliance agent yeah he was just like the vagabond goes wherever it's most profitable man or in this case the vagabond always attacks whoever's winning because it's ai but if uh the vagabond basically just picks on whoever is most profitable so the, va the Vagabond is not a good guy. <laughs> um, and Alexander, yes, this is the neoprene mat. Um, I did get the neoprene mats because I'm a sucker for play mats. As you can see from my box of play mats behind me, I'm a complete sucker for play mats. I oh, just help someone, someone help me. I have a problem. Um, so the... Um, what am I doing? Right, so the, um... And by the way, I do like the neoprene playmats for Root. I do really like them. The boards are great too, though. It's not like, uh... <laughs> yeah, oh. Oh, Hexy Beast, don't, don't start me on Cloud Spire, please. <laughs> um, okay, so what we're doing now is... Uh, what the hell was I doing? It's the end of my turn. Right, so it's the cat's turn, isn't it? Yep. I'm going to send my little crown back up here just so I remember that to refresh that. That's not part of the game. That's just something I do. Okay, here we go. Um, it's a bunny card. So, and this is a bunny ambush, by the way. An angry rabbit. But the ambush cards don't really mean anything to the AI. Um, I don't know. They can't be, they can't be ambushed. And also, um, they, they don't have any special effects. So, um, we've revealed that. It's not a crafting card. So now they're going to trigger a battle in all their bunny clearings. But uh, that is only this one here. So they're going to essentially destroy the sympathy token here and earn a point. Good job, cats. Okay, now they're going to recruit. They're going to recruit four soldiers across their bunny clearings. Oh, they've almost got all their soldiers. The cat always gets all of the soldiers out. And by the way, I actually um, totally meant to say earlier on, uh, there are four levels of difficulty. Easy, normal, challenging, and hard. We're playing on normal with all of these guys. There's also a bunch of trait cards that change their behavior in interesting ways and tend to make them harder. I was actually going to ask you guys if I should use some, but then uh, I just started playing and I forgot, so we're not using them now. But um, they're actually really interesting. So I'll, I'll show you guys the difficulty and the trait cards at the uh, at the end of the, uh, the game if you want to see them. Um, but So if you're looking at this game and thinking... Um, Oh boy, it should be interesting if there's more variety. There is lots more variety in this set here. Um, I have not tried solo Hexy Beast because I'm generally not a solo player. Everybody tells me Cloud Spire is great solo and terrible multiplayer. But I bought it for multiplayer. <laughs> See my review. <laughs> okay. So uh, what I'm doing, I've done the recruiting, and we recruited an extra cat to the clearing with the keep. So now we're going to build, we're going to build a workshop into the clearing with the most cat pieces, which happens to be um, four tied. Uh, they're going to try to build in one. They can't. They're going to try to build in five, but they can't. So then they're going to try to build in 12, which they, uh, in 11, which they can. They build in 11. Here we go. Bam. And now we're going to do a move, but there's not enough cat soldiers anywhere. So now we will expand, but we don't need to. So we're just going to score one point. Bam. End of the turn. 
Cat's done. Over to the Woodland Alliance for their rebuttal. Oh, it's a bird card. They're going nuts. Oh, no. And uh, this is a little animal building a boat. So this uh, this card is actually pretty cool. It allows you to move along the rivers if you craft this. Um, so this is another one of those asymmetrical powers. And essentially what you do is you have to pay um, crafting resources, which are here and here. And each faction has their own way of generating crafting resources. So how you get those will depend on who you're playing. I get them just by having... The more people get them just by putting buildings in clearings. So I've got one fox crafting point at the moment. Um, and these, these symbols here are wild. So I just need two of any symbol to craft this card. And then I'd get this asymmetrical power. Um, interestingly, the otters... This is actually an otter ability. The otters can use uh, the rivers for movement... Um, in inherently um so what we've got uh over here is now the woodland alliance going nuts they don't craft these cards the ai never craft the cards with powers on they only ever craft cards with items from the top of the board so uh we're not going to revolt in the bird song because we're going to do it in daylight with the surprise and we're going to do sympathy instead so we're going to put out two sympathy tokens and i'm going to get up my little chart here so i can parse this correctly boop 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 ba -doop. Okay, so we've got Sympathy on the board, so we're looking for matching clearings, but it doesn't really matter where. So now we're looking for fewest warriors. Well, we're going to go for here, because the Vagabond doesn't actually count as a warrior. And then we're going to go... Um, the next highest priority, which is back here. God damn it, I might get a revolt anyway. If they revolt in here and destroy all my shit... I'm going to be sad. Uh, and I think they might actually do that. In fact, they almost certainly are going to do that. Oh, God. Darn it. No! Okay, so um, we've spread the, the sympathy, and they get two points. Boom, boom. Somebody stop them. Okay, and now they're going to spread sympathy again, and they're going to spread this sympathy to... The clearing with the league, the fewest warriors, um, and in this case, uh, adjacent clearing with fewest warriors. In this case, it's going to be seven, because that's two, and uh, this is two also, but not seven is a higher priority than nine. Um, so now it's surprise revolt. Oh, they get a point for that. Bam! Damn it. Okay, now it's surprise revolt time, and they are going to revolt in either a fox or a bunny clearing. And they are going to revolt into the highest priority clearing that they have sympathy in, which happens to be mine. Oh, no. I'm so upset. So, bam. In comes the, uh, the hideout. Everything is destroyed. And that includes my tunnel, so they get a point. No, I'm so sad. Oh, just get me away from these Woodland Alliance. They're so angry. Um... So that's that's done, and now what we're going to do is we are going to organize. There's not yet any organization, so we go straight to recruit, and they're going to get a little guy in here and a little guy in here. Oh my god! And they're done. Stop drawing bird cards, damn it, Woodland Alliance, vagabond! I demand you murder them all. Ah, so he's drawn a bird card. He doesn't go quite as nuts when he draws a bird card, but it's a crafting card, so he makes a boot and earns a point. And then he's going to explore, and that's going to be exploring a ruins. So there are, in fact, ruins on the board. Ah, oh, thanks for watching, Jonathan. Have a good day. Have a good afternoon, and I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you around. Um, so there are ruins on the board, and the, the Vagabond can explore the ruins for loot. So he's first got to move to a ruins, and we've got one closest ruins, which is here. So we flip over two tokens to move there. So he goes one, two, over to here. And now he's going to flip over another token to explore these ruins. And basically what that means is we take the ruins token off the board. So this just comes off the board, and we'll put it onto his board here just to keep it out of the way. And then he gets the treasure underneath, which is this sword. He's found a magical sword in the ruins. Yay! And we put that straight into the satchel for his immediate use. And now he's going to quest. So he must find a rabbit clearing. And the rabbit clearings are all miles away. Oh, no, there's one right there. So he's going to flip over a token to move to the rabbit clearing down here. 
And then he's going to flip over another two tokens to do a quest. And his quest is going to be um, give a speech. So he gives a rousing speech in the rabbit clearing and earns a point. Bam. And then what he's going to do is to aid. But uh, the Woodland Alliance have made nothing for him. And he's extremely angry about this. He's very agitated. So he flips over his last one to trigger a baffle. And in this battle, he's got a maximum of two hits. So as though he had two warriors in his army. I'll put this on for you guys so you can see the, uh, the dice tower here. There we go. Um, wee, wee. Okay, it's a three and a one. So he he's assigned the three, which means he does two hits because two's his maximum. And the one hit is assigned to the Woodland Alliance. But the thing about the Woodland Alliance is that they are guerrilla warriors. They never actually trigger battles ever. But they're very good at defending. They get an extra hit if they defend. So even though there's only one warrior, they get to do two hits. So here's what happens. The Vagabond takes two damage, which means I've moved two of these tokens down into the damaged box here. And now that means he's only got five left in his satchel, so he loses this one off the battle track. However, attacks are simultaneous, so he still gets to do his two hits. And when we do hits, we first start by removing warriors, and then we start by removing tokens. Um, if it's a human player, they can choose what to remove, but uh, the AI will always start with warriors, then tokens, then buildings. So this comes back over here, and the Vagabond earns two points, because the Vagabond gets points for killing warriors, unlike other people. So he goes up to nine. And he's done. Quelling the uprising, working for the cats, you mercenary. All right, the bird card is done. Oh, wait, uh, first he gets to refresh four items because he's got damaged items. So he gets to refresh fewer when he has more damage. And uh, I actually, I think I prematurely took this off the battle track because I think that that should actually stay up there. Yeah, it should. Never ignore that. Um, but he does get to repair one of his damaged goods as well. And his turn is done. And it's me. My turn. I'm going to get two moles into the borough. Which I need. Because the Woodland Alliance killed my guys. Um, Alright. So the problem I've got here, folks, is that I don't have any bunny cards. And I would have liked to show up in a bunny clearing. Um, to do some, some daring do. So I think what I'm, I'd like to hire another guy, but I don't have enough presence on the board anymore. So I think actually what I'm going to do is murder and death and get a point for it. It's not great, but it'll have to do. So I'm going to spend this. Oh, now the question is, do I go to clearing eight or clearing six? I'm trying to decide which one to pop up into. I really don't like this situation up here at all. Uh, and I don't want to be close to it. But it's nice to be able to have the tunnels to move around. And this, I'm very close. This is very close together. So I don't know if this is just going to be a bit redundant. I do like that the Vagabond's down here murdering Alliance, though. That makes me feel good. Um, so I think I'm going to do a recruit to recruit one more mole into the burrow. And then I'm going to do a dig. And so I shall reveal this mouse card and I think I'm going to pop up uh, up here uh, no let's do it down here actually let's do it down here keep my forces together you know so three moles pop out of the tunnel that's my two actions but now I'm going to initiate my captain to trigger a battle in here and I'm going to destroy the sympathy um, and get a point for it good Get the, get that out of here. So now the good news is because I, re, I, I revealed, oh no, I digged, didn't I? So I spent that when I dig. Um, and that's the end of my turn. God, I'm, I'm, it's okay. Don't worry. We're building up to something big. It's going to happen. I get to draw a card. Aha, a bird card. It's a bird ambush. Look at that evil bird. He's like, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. The Woodland Alliance are like, oh no, it's the overlords. The previous ones, the eerie worthy overlords. Um, yes, Alexander, the uh, the white combat dice are the base set, and the uh, new Underworld expansion comes with these fancy black and gold dice, which are really nice. Um, okay, back to the Market Cat. 
Bam, bird card, fuck. Oh, God, that's a shit swear. Thankfully, Jonathan left already. <laughs> oh, no, this is not good. Okay, so it's a crafting card as well, so it's a sword. So he crafts the sword, gets a point. And then he's going to battle in every clearing. So that's uh, what we'll do is we'll go through them in order, I find, to be the most helpful. And we've got nothing in one, so we're going to go straight to clearing two, where this one cat warrior is going to take on the whole Woodland Alliance on his own. Where, where am I? Where's my life? I'm going to knock over all my buildings. Bam! It's a zero. And a zero. It's a double zero. That means nothing happens. Complete stalemate. Total wash. So we're done up here. Uh, we'll do three, which is down here. There's no cats. So four. Uh, nope. Nope. Six. Yes, up here. The cats destroy the sympathy marker. And gain a point. Uh, seven is there, and they destroy another sympathy marker and gain a point. And then it is eight, which is here, which is against me. Oh, another zero zero would be fine by me. Let's see. It's a zero and, oh, that's not good. A one, so I lose a mole. Stupid cat kills my guy and doesn't even die. Oh, so, so rude. Okay. Um, and I think that's it, actually, because 9, and there's nothing, 10, 11, 12, nothing. Okay, so uh, then it is Recruit. They were going to recruit these four cats over here, and they're going to recruit them into their lowest priority clearings. Their lowest priority clearings, which are two in here and two in here. Oh, no, they're all going to come and get me. Um, actually, no, that's not true. I don't have the most warriors. They're still going to come get me. Um so what's going to happen next is we're going to build and we're going to build a sawmill into this clearing here because these two are tied and that one has no building spaces. God, somebody stop these cats. Somebody stop this alliance. What is going on? Robots are beating me. Um, so then they're, now they're going to do a move and they're going to do a move and then trigger battles because they're super angry. God, all these bird cards. So they're actually going to move two guys into here and then battle me. Um, which I really hate because that's the clearing with the most guys that are adjacent. Yeah, uh, that's nearest. Here we go. Whee! Whee! It's a zero zero! Complete stalemate! That's so unlikely. Okay, well, I guess that's good. I mean, I would have rather a two two than everyone would be dead. No, I'm glad it's a stalemate, actually. I've changed my mind. I'm okay with stalemate. Um, and now these. Uh, boys over here are going to head up to two because there is the most enemy warriors in there. And they're going to trigger another battle. This is going to be a bloody one. Let's see what happens. It's a 2-1. So, we got uh, Woodland Alliance adding a 1 to the 1 because they're defenders. And so two cats die and two Woodland Alliance warriors die. Okay. It was a bloody conflict between the Woodland Alliance and the Cats. And then what we're going to do is we're going to score three points for the Market Cat to go up to 11. They're now tying with the Woodland Alliance. And then we'll discard this bird card. Okay, time for the Alliance to retaliate. They've revealed a mouse card. I don't like that. So, with the mouse card, what we're going to do is we're going to try to revolt, but there's nothing, so it's public pity. More spreading of the pity. So we're going to go into here, and we're going to go into here, because these are both adjacent to... Oh, wait, no, there's no sympathy in there. The Vagabond destroyed it. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so it's actually going to go into here and into here, because this is adjacent to sympathy with the fewest warriors. Um, and there's no matching clearings adjacent to sympathy. Um, so that's uh, 1 point, 1 point, 2 points for the Woodland Alliance, up to 13. And then they're going to spread sympathy once again. And this time it will go into here. Because it is adjacent with the fewest warriors. And there's no mouse clearings adjacent. So that's one more point for them. And surprise re revolt does not happen. So we're into recruit. They would do an organize. They would have done an organize if the cats hadn't murdered all their people. Um, an organize is basically just get rid of your warriors and spread more sympathy. 
Okay, done. Over to the Vagabond. Save us, Vagabond, with your mighty skills. So, we've revealed an order card here. It is a crafting card, so he crafts this item, which is good for him. Now he's got seven items, eight items, one more. If he repairs this, he can do extra damage. Um, and he gets a point for that. Bam. If we, if I had made the investments, I would have got three points. But uh, that's because I'm a human being. Okay, all done. So, oh, wait, mouse card. Shit, come back. Um, so we're going to start by questing. Questing in him. Oh, he's in the mouse clearing already. So he flips over two, gets a point. Then it's new quest. New quest is expel bandits in a, a... I said bunny. It was a bunny clearing. He needed to give a speech in a rabbit clearing. And, he's in one. and now he's going to go and expel bandits from a bunny clearing. Uh, from a mouse clearing. God damn it. <laughs> so there he is, expelling the bandits with mighty bravery. They're like, yeah, stay away. Um, so what we're going to do next is aid. They've made no crafted items. There's no other factions present. So we're, then we're going to battle. Yes, he's going to battle the Woodland Alliance again. For glory. And fortune. Oh. It's a three. And a three. Oh, mighty bloodshed. So the Woodland Alliance can only do a maximum of one damage because they've only got one warrior, but they add an extra hit. So that's effectively two. He can also only do a maximum of two because he doesn't have his third spot unlocked on the battle track. So that's two damage each. So we drop two items down here into the damaged thing, um, which isn't enough to modify the battle track. But... He, they also lose their warrior and their token, and he earns two points. I am not doing super great. Do you know, I'll let you in a little secret, guys. I know probably everybody says this, but I won every single game I played against the bots in practice for this. And I was super tempted to use like the extra difficulties or the trait cards in order to... Um, <laughs> in order to make them more difficult. And now I'm not sure. Now, um, do you know what, Alexander? The, the thing about the 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 thing about the way the hu okay. So I've had some bad luck here. To caveat it, I've had some bad luck. All of the bird cards for the mechanical marquee and the automated alliance have been brutal. But also, um, also what's happened is that um, the 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 the, the human factions always get off to a slower start uh well that's not true the marketed cat actually starts very strong so the kind of cool thing about the game and the different factions is there's this real ebb and flow of power um so what you get is like um you know everyone gang up on the cats at the start because they're like everywhere just spaffing out buildings and getting loads of points the cats almost always take an early lead but then and they don't care if their buildings are destroyed, really, because they can just rebuild them and get more points um, by building them, because they score for building. But um, then, like, the Eerie start off with one massive army in one space on the board, and that kind of starts spreading out, building roots. Um, but then the Woodland Alliance, they start with nothing, right? But then they have these revolts that overthrow everything in the clearing. So the sort of ebb and flow in the back and forth of the game will really depend on which factions you're playing with, and it's really, really interesting. It's always super interesting. Um, to see how that works out, and um, and so that's uh, and so I, this is not uncommon. I've actually seen the games against the bots. They tend to get around 15 points before I can start doing anything massively significant. So I'm not worried yet, although I'm a little worried because um, it's not that I've got a low score that's worrying me. It's my presence on the board. Like my presence on the board here is not good um, because I had a few setbacks with the cats. And messing me up um, and those bird cards the cats have had the two escalated daylights already that's really not done me any favors but you know I, I'm not out of the game yet mm. um, right so what we have here is two more tokens on the vagabond board so we flip those over to trigger another battle because if he starts a battle he spends one token to start a battle Resolve the battle. If there are any pieces left, and I didn't mention this, but uh, whenever you do a battle, you pick 
who your the defender is. So if you're in a, if the vagabond was up here starting a battle, he'd have to choose the cats or the mice to or the woodland alliance to attack. And you always pick one defender. And um, if it's human players, you can choose whoever you want. But in this case, because it's the AI, the the vagabond's criteria is always the winner. So they, he'll always attack whoever's in the lead um, if he has a choice. But in this case, uh, so he'll attack the Woodland Alliance, resolve the battle, and then if he hasn't killed all the pieces in the clearing, he will then trigger a second battle for two actions. So it's called, it's twice as expensive. And then he'll keep triggering additional battles for two actions each time until he's destroyed all the enemy pieces of that faction or runs out of action tokens. So in this case, uh, we had two left, so he just destroys this base. I don't need to roll for it because it's a defenseless base um, and there's only one token there. Um, and he gets a point for that. Bam. And he and what happens when a hideout of the uh, Woodland Alliance is destroyed, they lose all sympathy in matching clearings. So in this case, our sympathy here is lost. So a little bit of a setback for the Woodland Alliance, but not too bad, really. And he's all out of action tokens. So we go into the evening. He has taken damage, so he only gets to refresh four of these. But then he gets to repair one of his damage tokens as well. If he ever gets down to like three, then he'll slip into the woods and hide. But uh, I've actually never seen him take that much damage. And I think it's because um, he's probably much more likely to take damage in a game with more human players who attack him. But I tend not to attack him because uh, I tend not to be winning most of the time because of the sort of the way the, uh, the bots work. Um, of course, that's going to change based on how many bots and human players you have. So... It's actually my turn! Oh, exciting, I get two moles in the burrow. Um, right. And I've got these two cards, and I really want to hire someone this round. I have presence in two clearings already, so I'm just going to keep these for that. I'm not going to do anything that would uh, cost me these cards, which means I can't dig, and I can't build a building, which is really annoying. I really want one of these markets so I can get an additional card. But... Obviously, I am also worried about the cat's presence. I'm pleased the Vagabond has cleared the Woodland Alliance out of here, so at least I don't really need to worry about that. He's not going to come and attack me so long as I'm losing, so I don't need to worry about that either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these two moles from here into here. That's one action. Uh, actually, do you know what? I'll recruit another mole first, and then I'll move all three together. Because other yeah, to defend my, my area. So there we go. Um... And then uh, that's my two actions, recruit and move. And now I will trigger my captain, and we'll have a battle in area number nine. Wee, wee! And it's a zero and a two. Mighty success! The mole army takes no casualties and destroys both cats. Get out of here, jerks. Um, so, mighty success. And now what I can do is I can um, reveal both of these cards here. And I've got a fox clearing and a mouse clearing. Bird covers mouse. I can hire another squire. And I think I'll take the squire that lets me move. Yes. Oh, the build a building squire. No, we'll take the squire that lets us move. So there's another little crown on him. And I get one more point. Yes. Four points for me. So now I can take the revealed cards back into my hand. I have to discard any bird cards, though. And the fox card goes back into my hand. And then I can craft using my citadel. I'm not going to craft the false orders because I really need this to be in my hand so I can reveal things because I need more revealing stuff. So I'll draw a card and I'm done. All right, let's keep going. Cats. Cats are triggering fox. So it's a regular daylight for the cats. So they're going to start by battling in all fox clearings. I've kicked them out of mine. No enemies in the other. Straight to recruit where they recruit four soldiers across their fox clearings and two in the clearing of highest priority which is the five and now it's a build and we're going to be building a song i don't like how many sawmills they have i might have to try and take this clearing here and wreck those buildings i'll get points for it too uh if i can pull it off so um we can't build in here can we no yes no no. Yes. Yes, we can. Sawmill building. So, because we can't build in here, can we? No. We can't build in here, because that's where there's five. So then we're going to look for other areas. This has got four. Nothing else has four, so it doesn't there. 
Yep, this is the sawmill mecca. We have to go and... Oh, I don't want to say that. Uh, this is Sawmill Central. We have to go destroy it. Or what's the name of the robot city in in the Matrix? Destroy that. Um, anyway, so he's built. He's going to do a move. He's going to move this guy up here. And he's going to move to do these two into here because there, it's, it's enemy warriors, though. Enemy pieces, yep. So he's going to move those two in here. And that's it. He is now complete. So he would expand, but he built. So now he's going to score four points. Oh, God, he's now winning. And then he's going to discard that card. And now it's time for the Woodland Alliance to retaliate with the Fox card themselves. Oh, look at this. Yeah, they're mad. Look at that Fox. He's like, I'm going to get, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I can do it. So he's going to craft a sword first, gets him a point. And then he is going to uh, try to revolt, which he can. He can revolt. Can he revolt? No, he can't revolt because he doesn't have any sympathy in Fox clearings. Otherwise, he would have. So public pity instead. So we're going to go to adjacent Fox clearings, which happens to be this one and this one. So we're picking these two because they're Fox clearings adjacent to existing sympathy. But the thing is, because both have three warriors in, they actually quell... The uprising, the, the 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 guards are like, none of that. So even though the sympathy of tokens go out, he gets minus one point for each token because they're only worth one each. No points. But he is going to spread sympathy one more time. He's going to look for another adjacent fox clearing, but there isn't one. So we're looking for fewest warriors, which is and it's enemy warriors. So there's three enemy warriors in here. Um, so it's back here, and he does get a point for that because there is only two warriors in there. Oh, he's in the lead again. And we are done spreading sympathy. There's no surprise revolt. So we're going to recruit into here. And recruit happens after organize. So we didn't do an organize once again. And boom, done. All right, time for the Vagabond to show us how it's, it's another Fox card. Oh, look at this. This card makes me so sad. It's like propaganda bureau. The Fox is like reading the propaganda. Like, this, this can't be right. This isn't, this isn't good. It's not right. Um, it's not a crafting card, so we're not going to do any crafting. And we're going to go straight on to explore. So we need to find a ruins. And the nearest ruins is here, right here. So we flip over an item, go up into here, and we explore these ruins. So we've got another little bag for our vagabond there. And that gives us six, seven, eight tokens. So if we repair one, it will go to our battle track. And from here, what we are going to do next is to, uh, did I? I did not. No, I have to also exhaust a token to explore. So we're down to three. And now we're going to battle. He's going to trigger a battle. And he's going to move to the clearing with the uh, nearest enemy pieces. So he's actually going to move up here to the clearing 12. And then he's going to flip over one more to battle against the sympathy of the Woodland Alliance. And that comes back over here. And he gets one point. Bam. And that's it. Oh, no. Now he's going to do his special. Oh, the special. We haven't seen the special yet. So he's going to take a card from the enemy in your clearing with the most points there than the most pieces. Well, the funny thing is he's going to steal from the cat because they're the only ones there. But also, they don't have any cards because they're a robot. So he's going to flip this over. And he's just going to earn a point. So when an AI would gain a card, they can't, um, they can't, so they get a point. And in this case, he would take from the cats. The cats don't have a hand of cards, but it doesn't matter because he doesn't get cards anyway. If the cats had been human, this player would have to randomly discard a card, I think, and then uh, the AI would get a point. But it's not a human. Anyway, um, over to the end. He's still damaged, so he replenishes four items. And then he repairs an item, which will move straight up here to the battle track, because it is the ninth item. And the card is discarded, and it's my turn again. Yes, my turn. This is my favorite bit. So, two moles into the borough, and now we have to think about what we're going to do with these moles. Who shoved the... <laughs> I, I shuffled so much at the start of the stream, Alexander. Like, so much. Um... 
Uh, the Alliance doesn't get a lot of warriors, uh, Gavin, but they don't mind. I mean, they're actually winning. So the number of warriors you have is not necessarily a barometer for your success. And the way the Woodland Alliance kind of works is they like to pop up and destroy things. Um, so, you know, the, 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 the cats, I mean, actually all the AIs are doing very well. I'm not doing so well. But that's okay, because I'm starting to get some more guys out here. I've got a bit more of a, a sort of a presence on the board here. I've got two more cards here, so I'm going to get another guy this round, I think. As much, I really would like to build another market, though, and I think the market is really, not having another card is really holding me back. So I'm just trying to decide whether... I do want to go up here and do sort this situation out, though. Uh, because I am really worried about all those points um, from those sawmills. Um, but I think we might need a bit more time. I actually, do you know, I really want to get a market as well because, uh, oh, bye Marcella, thanks for watching. Um, Uh, no, it wouldn't have gone to clearing three, Gavin, because there was no adjacent sympathy. Oh, there was... You're bang on. Thank you for correcting me. Yes, I, I, I missed this path because I'm a, I'm a doofus. So, um, thank you for correcting me, sir. Um, so now I'm just trying to decide whether I build a market or hire a minister. The market is good because it helps me get better ministers and more points. And I think actually... In the long run, I don't really need his action right now, and he's only worth a point. So actually, yes, let's build a market, I think. So my two actions, I'm going to... I'm going to move these two out of the burrow into here. And I'm going to then build a market. So I have to reveal a card that matches that clearing. It's the bird card. So we get a market in here. Um... And now I've got a move and initiate a battle action. Uh, and I think what I'll do is I will move uh, a couple of guys from here over to here because I want to protect my market and I might want to go up here and sort this out. And then I will initiate a battle in this clearing to just kill this cat. We Oh, I d missed my dice tower. Nobody, nobody look! It's a three and a three. Good lord. Well, one mole dies and one cat dies. Because them's the maximums. All right. So, resolved. Now, I can't, uh, unfortunately, reveal any cards to higher ministers because I only have one in hand. And I have to give this card up as well. But the good news is I now get to draw two cards because I have a market. And we've got two bunny cards. I control no bunny clearings. Shit. That's going to have to be sorted out next turn. Okay, um, back to the cat. Bird card. God damn it. Oh, it's just not my day. All right. So, it's not a crafting card, so we go straight to battle in all clearings. Well, at least it's not me. Um, <laughs> so I think uh, we're going to start up here in clearing two. And we've got double twos. So two cats died. Three cats would die, but uh, there's not enough cats. So two cats died, two little lions died. And then we're going to battle in... No, nothing going on. We can battle in 12, but that will happen last, I think. There's no battle in three. Yep, so the only other battle is... Well, actually, battle here and here. These two go away. Cat gets two points. Ooh, I don't like it. Yeah, and then that's it. So it's just battle over here in 12 next. Against the Vagabond. Who currently can score a maximum of three hits. So this is going to be bloody. And we've got a three and a one. So the cats do three hits on the Vagabond. And the Vagabond does one damage in return. I would have liked him to do more. Because I was quite fancy going in there. So he takes three damage. 
which means that he's going to lose um, this one off the battle track as well. Oh, he doesn't like that. Okay, and now we're into recruit. And it's just going to be the middles again. God, somebody get these cats out of the middle space. I've also thrown a cat onto the floor. Uh oh. There we go. We're cat recovered. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. Never mind. Um, build. So we're going to build the sawmill. Oh, they're going to get so many points. Uh, can't build here. Can't build here. Next most is one of these. Uh, and so it's going to be in here. Okay. And now we're going to move. And we're going to move two into here. Oh, no. They're coming to get me. And that triggers a battle, which I should resolve now. It's a 3-1. So they do two to me and I do one to them. Oh, God. And I thought I was... Just when you thought you were safe from angry cats, you were wrong. Yeah, I need to... Uh, I need a... Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It is the high time to start earning victory points. Um, so then we've got four cats in here and they're going to move one cat down here into eight because I have the most warriors in there and they're going to trigger a battle in eight as well. And it's a three and a one. Well, that's one death on each side there. So, um, voila. Hey guys, is this dice tower really annoying? Is the sound really annoying? If the sound is super annoying, let me know and I'll stop using it. Um, it just occurred to me that that might be really annoying if you're not rolling the dice. Um, and yeah, Eddie, I need a peace treaty with someone because I'm getting my ass handed to me. But, ugh. It's all going to come up moles. Just, you just wait. I'm going to go from here to there. And, um, okay, so the bird card is basically done. They're going to score five points. This is actually outrageous. I, the, it's too many escalated daylights. Um, I need to get and sort this situation out. Or I just, actually the Vagabond will probably do it. Um, anyway, Woodland Alliance. Cool, good, 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 good. Uh, it's not a crafting card. Uh, it is a mouse card, so there's not going to be a revolt. So we're going to get to sympathy. We are going to mouse clearings with the fewest people that are adjacent. So here first, and then here, and no more mouse clearings. So that is no points for either of those, by the way. This one's not going to score any points unless it goes somewhere with fewer than three. And it's going to be fewest people. So this one will go to seven, I think. Um, because fewest enemy pieces is here. Out of all the adjacent ones, because it can't reach into the mouse. And that is one point for the Woodland Alliance. Okay. Um, sympathy done. Organize. There's no organizing. There is a recruit, though. One mouse into here. Okay. And they're resolved. Over to the Vagabond. Okay. It's a mouse card. It's not a crafting card. So he's going to start by doing a quest. No, you jerk. I need you to kill them. Um, so we're moving to the nearest clearing of the matching type. There's two, so he's going to go up to here because of priority. And... Exhaust an item, then he exhausts two items to complete his quest for a point. And gets a new quest card. And it's guard duty in a rabbit clearing. And now that he's done that, he's going to aid, which means he's going to buy this off of the Woodland Alliance, giving them one more point. And that costs him one action token there. And next, he is going to battle. Um, so he will actually move to the cats to do a battle so he's not actually going to get to battle because he's got not got enough actions but um he's going to move to the one with the most enemy pieces which is 12 so he's going over here but he's out of actions so he's done 
So we will refresh four tiles, and we will repair one damage tile as well. Okay, all done. Boom. My turn. Right, here we go, guys. Let's get some points. Points, 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 points. Okay, I've got a big problem because I need bunnies. I've got no bunnies. Um, I've also got a big problem because I need this cat gone and that gone. That's too many battles. Um, but I think we just have to be a bit... Um, yeah, just a, a little... I think what I'm going to have to do is go two moves. One, two. Um, so I can move... I do have to obey rule, but tokens don't apply for rules. So this is empty, so I can move two into here. I also rule this clearing anyway, so that move is legal. And then I can send this one guy up here because I rule this clearing. And now I control two bunny... I, now I am present in two bunny clearings. I don't need to control them. Um, I don't like spreading my forces out like this, but it's got to be how it's done. That's my two actions. I'm going to flip this one down here to do another move action, which is going to be to put these two into here to protect my citadel. Um, and then I can initiate a battle... I'm going to initiate a battle, I think, in here probably because, I mean, the, there is a base. The mouse, there's no chance of a revolt in the mouse clearings, to be fair. But uh, I don't want to, um, well, I suppose I could fight this cat. At least that's... No, if I clear this out, it's good, and it gets me a point. And I need points. Good, so now I can reveal these three cards. Um, because I've done both of my minister actions. So I can reveal these three cards to recruit a level three minister. Um, or a level two minister that costs three cards. And we will take the brigadier, who gives us two moves or two battles. So I think he's really powerful. And I kind of need him right now to move my guys around and kill stuff. So, there we go. And we get to take a crown from here, which is two points. Yes! See how the mighty have climbed back up. Um, and then uh, I get to return all of these cards to my hand. I can do a craft. Um, but, I mean, as much as I would love to do a craft, I don't really want to craft any of these cards. I need them for other things. So, actually, at the end of my turn, though, I'm going to get to draw two. Um, no, that's fine. We'll just draw two cards. End of the turn. Oh, it's more bloody rabbits. And a mouse with a crossbow. The crossbow should be worth more than one point, in my opinion, because it's awesome. Oh, and my favorite card in the whole game, because I love the artwork. Look at the little bake sale. And there's two cards. There's this one and another one of the Woodland Alliance pouring tea. And I just think they're so cute. Oh, I want to go to the Woodland Alliance bake sale. And then if I was a cat, I'd probably get murdered. Um, <laughs> okay, so back to the cats. Let's press on. It's a bird card. And it's going to trip. Another bird card. I've never, oh, I've never seen so many cats with bird cards in my whole life playing this game all of four times. Um, four times with the AI, I mean, not, not uh, in total with people. Um, oh, they're going to get another five points. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Okay, well, never mind. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. Somebody stop them, for the love of God. It's Why has nobody stopped them? Okay, so we're going to start by battling in each clearing. I mean, maybe the Vagabond will kill them all. He can't. Um, he's probably going to get killed. This has never happened. Um, so we're going to battle in this clearing here. Destroy the Sympathy. Gain a point. Oh, the cats might win this round, guys. No battle here. Uh, you should do this in priority if there's going to be an effect on priority, but uh, I don't think there will be, so. Battle here. Vagabond versus Cats. Vagabond's got a maximum of two hits for this one. 
And we've got a zero, zero. Nothing happens. Good job, Vagabond, you waste of space. Okay, now we're going over to uh, here, where the cats will attack. Uh, the, the Woodland Alliance, so I don't even need to roll. Because they'll attack whoever has the most points. That's another point. Uh, they are now one point away from winning. <laughs> um, and uh, we're going to do this battle here. Um, and it's a 1-3, so they destroy one of my guys, I destroy their cat. Oh my god. Okay, well, shit. Okay, uh, now they're going to try to build. Uh, they're going to build, I guess, one of these guys. And they're going to build it in the space with the most warriors, which is... Could be six. There's a space in there. Um, it will be... It will be six. Uh, and now they're going to move. Oh, I didn't do the recruit, did I? I just went straight to build. So they're going to recruit these three, and they're going to recruit them into... Two in here, and then one in here. And now they're going to move them, so these two are going to come back down here. And this one is going to go into here. Um, good God. Okay. And now uh, more battles. Um, up here first. Bam, bam. We got a zero and a one. So uh, cat kills a mouse. Mouse kills a cat because of the defender, the woodland defender. Um, trait. And then over here, it's uh, moles versus cat again. Two on two, and we've got a three and a zero. So they kill, oh my god, they kill both my moles. Um, they can't kill three because they only have two warriors. But that's still a disaster. They've wiped me out. And they've got my building dead to rights. Oh god, this is a complete disaster. I've not yet lost against the bots. Ooh, how did this happen on stream? Okay. <laughs> um, well, there you go. There, yeah. Um, and now they're going to score victory points, and they're going to score five victory points, which puts them on twenty-nine. And that's the end of their turn. Cool. <laughs> um, I really had intended to show you guys more cool mole stuff. Um, I did not play this well. Maybe, or maybe I just got unlucky. Yeah, I just got unlucky. It's fine. I just got unlucky. All those bird cards. <laughs> Good game, Robo. Yeah. Good game, Robo uh, Robo Cats. Um, okay, so now it's the Automated Alliance with a bunny card. They've, there's no craft. There's no. Uh, there could be a revolt, though. Yes, in fact, they're revolting over here. Cool. They kill my mole, and uh, they put a building out there. Um, and then they, we don't do public pity, so now we're just spreading sympathy. We're going to go up to here because it's a bunny clearing with a bunny card. And that's it. And then we are going to uh, get a point for that. No, no point because there's three enemies. Um, organize. We are going to not organize, but we are going to recruit. So we get a soldier in here and a soldier in here. And then it's the vagabond who's got a bunny a mouse yeah, mouse card, not a crafting card. So he's going to start with a quest. God, you know, he's not been doing enough battling in my opinion. Um, so he's going to start with his quest, which is in a bunny clearing. So he's going to flip over two, uh, one, to go down here, and another two to do his quest and get a point. And then it's going to be a uh, aid, um, but nobody in there has any items for him. So he's going to skip right over aid and go to battle. I guess he's going to battle the. Uh, he wants to battle the cats though. So he's going to flip this over to move to one of these two spaces. The one with the most buildings. Bam. So he is resolved. He's going to get four tokens back. And he's going to get one item back. All right. Now it's my turn. Um... Yeah, I'm going to get two moles. I'm going to try to score a few more points so I'm not completely embarrassed by what's happened. By what's happened. Um, can I make this bake sale? No. Um, 
Okay. What I need is... Oh, well, it's, it doesn't really matter. I need to stop the cats from scoring one more point. The only way would be to destroy their recruiter up there and also then hope they draw a mouse card. That would buy me one more turn. Um, that's the only way that would work. And I don't think one more turn is going to cut it, you guys. So maybe I should just focus on scoring the most points I possibly can. Or going out with a bang. What do you think? Should I go for a big attack in clearing five? Or shall I just try to score a big, valuable card? Yeah, Heggers wants me to do the attack. Right? Yeah. Do the attack. Elongate the game as best you can. So i got two moles here. I do need to protect this clearing, ideally. Um... I usually have more citadels and stuff. I don't know what ha went wrong for me in this game. Um, but never mind. Um, I do have a fox card. So I will... Uh, yeah, I will reveal... I will recruit twice. No, I can't recruit twice. I shall recruit once. I'm not going to be able to kill that recruiter, though, without two battles. But that's okay. I could probably do two battles if I don't die. Depends on how the dice come out. We put, play the fox. Death or glory. We pop up in clearing five. Surprise! Cats. I was going to say something much worse there. Thank God Jonathan's not watching. Um, and then, you know, those are my two actions. But never fear. Um, I'm going to flip over this one here to move one more into here. Just to offer some tiny modicum of protection to my castle. And then I'm going to flip over the Brigadier. Uh, no, we'll do the Captain first, actually. No, we, we, we will need two battles. We'll do the Brigadier. Two battles in here. Battle one. Here we go. It's a three and a one. So I kill three cats and they kill one mole. Complete success. Take that, you jerks. Ha. Yes. Okay. Um, and now the Brigadier gives me two battles, so here we go, battle two. And we've got a one and a two. While well, they can't do shit and their buildings are defenseless, I score two because I have only got two warriors, but I destroy both buildings. Aha! And that means that I get two points. Yes! And also if the cats draw a mouse card, I don't lose, they don't win next turn. Um, actually they might still win next turn. Uh... They could easily still... Actually, yeah, they will win next turn anyway. Because of this token. Damn it. Uh, but hey, I tried. And I, I feel good that I had some success. I can act... Oh no! I can initiate another battle. I initiate a battle in clearing seven. And I destroy the sympathy token. Ha! Yes, one more point for me. Um, that might help. We'll see. I need, a, I need a mouse card to come out for the cats. I really need that card to be a mouse card. Please be a mouse card. Um... Okay, and with that in mind, I can actually now reveal um, the uh, cards from hand. I can reveal a bunny card, I can reveal a mouse card, and that's it. So I shall recruit my final squire for one point. Hooray, one more point. There we go. And guys, I do want to sort of iterate that this can escalate really quickly, this, the mold points. So... Um, you know, I, I, I definitely, obviously, have not timed this effectively. I pick up all of these. Now I can craft. Um, I think I will craft the crossbow because it's another point in it and it's slightly less embarrassing when I lose. So I'll craft the crossbow for one more point. Bam. All right. My turn is over. Draw two cards. More bunny cards. Gosh darn it. Oh, I love this as well. Look at this charm offensive it's like hey we brought you cakes and wine and the little cat and mouse is just like i love cakes and wine but i'm on guard duty i can't have them okay so mouse card 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 fucking mouse card yes all right i really hope that i haven't like i might they might still just win this turn um i don't know Oh, no, because they're going to build the building, aren't they? 
Yeah, there's no way, actually. I think they still win this turn. I needed to destroy another recruiter, which would have been impossible. Um, I don't even know where it is. Where's the other recruiter? Oh, no! Wait. No, I have destroyed enough recruiters. Yes! There's hope! Okay. Nobody stress. Right, battle in each mouse clearing. So the only battle is going to take place against the uh, Vagabond here. You know, the cats keep beating on him, and he's not doing anything about it. So there we go. Three and a two. So they do three damage to the Vagabond. Oof. And he does two damage in return. Two cats gone. I do want to get into that space. Not because, actually, I want to destroy their sawmills, but that is why. But I want the points. I don't really care about it them anymore because I can't stop them from winning really for very long and it's just impossible uh, they're gonna recruit four cats now this recruit um, will be into mouse clearings so one in here one in here and those are their only two mouse clearings so they will distribute them evenly and then uh, we're going to go to uh, build where they will build a recruiter into the clearing of the most dudes. Um, not that one, not that one. So this one. And uh, now they're going to do a move. So these two will continue to come and harass. Oh god, this space is so screwed. I'm really in trouble here. Um, and then these ones will go over here. And they don't expand because they built, so they score no points, and that's the end of their turn. We have survived one more round. <laughs> uh, one more round. Okay. Um, automated Alliance. It's a bunny card, and it's a crafting card, so they craft this little bag and score a point. You know, I'm... Oh, no. You all spot what I spotted just now. Michael, are you ready to flip your table? I got so excited that this was a mouse card in my hubris. Not my hubris, my excitement. I didn't realize it's also a crafting card. So they craft this bag and win the game. Oh, I was so excited to have hung in there one more turn. I was so pleased. God damn it. Oh, if that hadn't been a, uh, a crafting card that I just drew for the Woodland Alliance, I probably wouldn't have thought to check that one. It's actually an adorable card as well. Look at it. Look at his little mouse in the sack. And he's like, surprise! Guys! I'm gonna get you. Uh. Okay, well... I think that's the, uh, I think that's got to be the end of that. The cats get the point for crafting, and they win the game. And I, oh, Eddie, thank you so much for your nice little comment there. Um, yeah, so, uh, I mean, I think I, I think I will stop there, guys, because, uh, you know, I, I, I could keep doing a bit more gameplay, but, um, Honestly, like, um, this is actually the first time I've lost against the bots. And what's interesting is that I thought that this was a tougher game than the other ones I've played. And I did play quite a lot of these as practice because learning to parse their behaviors and do them quite quickly does take practice. But I got it down quite quickly. And once I'd learned how to do it, what I was really surprised by, and this goes for the Electric Eerie as well, the one faction we didn't play with, is that I found that they replicate the behavior of those factions in a game with humans quite effectively. Like, I was, I really like Root, and there's a lot of elements of Root that don't come out in the game against the bots because it's a lot more, uh, there's a lot less table talk and banter and sort of back and forth, um, which I do really like. But as, a, as an approximation of a game with real people, and I, this is still really enjoyable. I really, really enjoy 
playing all of the games against the bots I had, which is funny because I'm do doing four turns and three of them aren't even me, you know? Um, and, and so there, you know, I mean, it, Root is a game that is, that does have an element of luck in it. Obviously there's a deck of cards and some dice. Um, and so luck can swing things, but this was definitely, I definitely felt like this game was some tactical blunders on my part. And actually usually what I do with the moles is build the markets first to get more cards in. And then the cards help me to build more buildings and hire more of the, um, ministers. So I do think that, um, actually my mistake really was getting the Citadel out first and not the market because the cards for the moles are really important because that's how you dig the tunnels. That's how you uh, recruit the ministers and all of that. And recruiting the ministers obviously gets you points, and that's great. But really, it's also about getting access to those extra actions because two around, and they're so inefficient. Their actions are like recruit one guy, move one space. You know, um, their dig action is superb. It's really what makes them. That was catastrophic. Yes, Eddie, that was catastrophic. Selkath, one more game. Oh man, I would love to come back for another game of Root. I don't have time today, but uh, Alexander, they, they are easy to run once you um, practice a bit. Like once you get your be their behaviors down, because um, they do they are slightly nuanced. And I, I will confess, I did do quite a lot of preparation for this stream because I didn't want the whole stream to be me going. And then what's the tiebreaker here? You know, um, but obviously if you're playing solo, you don't have that pressure anyway. But uh, once you sort of, their behavior and the way they behave, it really fits in with their thematic presence and the way the game is sort of set up to, to um, realize that theme. And so it's actually, once you get your head around that, it's actually not too bad at all. Um, and then, yeah, they really do feel like they're, they're real factions in the game. So I, I really, uh, I really enjoyed it actually i've really enjoyed all the games i've played with the clockwork expansion so I'm, I'm really pleased how that worked out and i know that benjamin the guy who designed it um is working on clockwork versions of the other four factions he's working on some additional ai for these factions to deal with some of the other factions as well so yes yeah, elkath exactly best two out of three i just win the next two and i'll be fine maybe next time i can play the lizards or something a faction I'm a bit more, uh, not that I don't like the moles, actually. I do quite like the moles. Um, I, I like their dig, their surprise, like, you know, gotcha, you jerks. We were here all along, underground, just waiting and biding our time. Much like my victory. But, um, yeah, so I think, and uh, so I have, um, I managed to play one game with, um, with my my um partner so i can um in my house and we used uh some bots and two two humans and um so that was that was nice to sort of get a sense of the 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 new factions and i played with um i played with the moles in that as well and they were really interesting that was the one where we played with the cats she was the cats and we played with the electric eerie and i played the moles and it was just this huge battle because all those factions have loads of warriors and they're just like bam 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 um and i played one of, i played one of the bot games i played against with the corvid conspiracy and like i said i really i think i really like them i'd love but i think that most of them are all about um i think most of their stuff is like bluffing and sort of lying and just being like sort of really trolly which fits in with my play style. Um, but uh, it's it's like, it's all bluffing and lying and that kind of thing, which I really, really like. And they can like swap, they put these plots out on the board and your people are trying to guess what the plots are and they swap them around and they have to kind of deal with them because if you get, every time you sort of realize a plot, um, for every plot that's already face up on the board, you get more points. So people have to like try and get those plots off the board. So that was, they're, they're really, really cool. I'm really excited to check them out uh, with real people. Um, yeah, so uh, Root it remains a game that I think is absolutely fantastic. I really, really like it. I like everything about it. And I really like what's come in the new boxes as well. And I like the bots. So, um, I, I, yeah, another good one, Leader Games. Thanks so much for uh, for sending me the Ruby copy of the Clockwork box and everything because I didn't buy it. And now I'm, I would be... I mean, to be fair, it is absolutely great that it's print and play. And I think that if you're if you are... 
in two minds about the price of the expansion, the Clockwork expansion, which is about $40. Um, you are paying to support the company. And I don't know what the situation is with Benjamin, the guy who designed them, and whether he gets any of that money. Um, I hope he does, but I don't know that. Um, but what you're paying for is, is the nice printout of the cards and the boards, really. You're paying for the four boards and a deck of cards. And I was gonna show you guys the cards. I'll show you guys the cards real quick and then uh, then we'll be done. Um, Selkath, I found that the Corvid Conspiracy was really sort of tricky to pull off against. I'll tell you what, I did win when I was playing as the Corvid Conspiracy. Like I said, it just this is the first game I've lost with three bots versus me, which is typical. Um, but never mind, you know, um, I did blunder this one. Like I said, I changed up my strategy a little bit. And then I kind of put me on the back foot and then I had some bad luck as well. Um, but uh, I I'll, overall really enjoyed playing this one. I uh, really enjoyed playing this game. Um, the, this is the first time I've seen the cats come this close to winning, actually. The, uh, well, actually, I say that. I think um, in my other games, in, in a few of my other games, the Woodland Alliance or the Automated Alliance does really well. Like sometimes they get so scary. You, you're really surprised. But um, what you've got is these decks of cards here which are, let me just grab my little guy over here. And these are like, um, so you've got these extra behaviors. So these modify the way they behave. So it says, um, and most of these behaviors are sort of additional functions that make them more difficult to play against. So this one says, after you move, find the clearing you rule of the highest priority with no enemy pieces. Move all but one warrior from that clearing, then battle in the destination clearing. So. Uh, fortified, your buildings can each take two hits to remove. Taking a single hit has no effect. Good god, that's good. Iron will, whenever you recruit in an escalated daylight, place double the warriors. So, uh, this is a facsimile for the hospital function that, um, that the human player has, that the, the automated cat doesn't have. It says, at the end of the battle as the defender, if two or more warriors are removed in battle, Place two warriors in the clearing with the keep token. So that's really cool, actually. I might try that. Um, and then you've got these extra difficult uh, levels as well, which scale up. Um, the We were playing on normal, which fits in here. So you can actually make them a bit easier as well if you think you do need a bit more practice to try against them. Um, and so I won't go through all of the cards, but you've got all each three, uh, four traits of these trait cards for each faction and four difficulties as well. And then the uh, the vagabond also comes with the uh, the little oh, where are they his little roll cards as well, which I've I've lost oh, they're over here, but um, yeah so he can have all of those as well so lots and lots of variety in there oh oh where'd I go I ow. what am I doing oh uh, lots of variety in there so that's really really cool. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to when Benjamin comes out with automated stuff for the other four factions because I'd really like to try automated lizards, automated otters, automated corvid, and automated moles. I think that'd be really, really neat. But uh, that's going to be it from me, guys. Now, this stream was chosen by my patrons who get votes on the stream. And so this was all thanks to them. So if you enjoyed this stream, say thanks to the Patreon and patrons and if you are the patrons. And if you are interested in that kind of stuff, Please do check out my Patreon page. It's just Ready Steady Play on Patreon. There's links on the channel and everything, so you can find that. You get votes. So normally the votes are on games we'll cover in our standard series. Obviously, at the moment, I'm doing these live streams because I'm dealing with uh, my job and everything, and it's been difficult for me to put out the series. And also, we have only got... We're not filming any more series at the moment, obviously, because the guys aren't around. So we can't really vote on what we would play when we're not playing anything. Um... Maybe we could do something on Tabletop Simulator, but I wanted to try and stick with the physical games as much as possible. And also I thought doing the solo stuff, it's really helpful for people who might be stuck at home solo gaming themselves. So I hope you guys have enjoyed sort of this adventure to solo gaming. And um, I know that uh, Cthulhu Death May Die and also um, Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. And there's a few others that are quite near the top of those votes on what we'll play next for the live streams. So do be sure to check that out if that's something you can do. But I hope you're all keeping safe. I hope you're all managing to keep your heads above water during this uh, challenging time. And thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. And, you know, all of my best wishes to you guys out there, no matter what's going on with you. Thanks for watching, everyone. 
and see you soon. Bye.